What is up? Coming at you live, I hope. <laughs> Hit the comments and let me know if uh, if I'm coming through okay. Can you hear me? Can you see me? How's my hair? <laughs> hey, Jerry, I see the comment. What's up? Geothish, yo, let's go. George. Oh, I'm giving it a go. Gotcha. All good. Perfect. Caleb, much love from Melbourne, Australia. 1 a.m., dude. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Holy hell. <laughs> 1 a.m. That is legit. Finn, sounds good. Beautiful hair. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hair game is strong. All right. Excellent. Well, it looks like we're we're coming through okay. Awesome. So, yeah, the goal of this is to basically just take the next two hours. I'm hoping I can get it done in two hours. Um, who is it, Melbourne? Caleb, I know you said it's 1 a.m. I'll try to make it quicker than two hours for you, buddy. It's, that's, that's super late. Uh, but the goal is to just walk through the entire mix of my song, Broken Mirror. Uh, I mixed the song myself. Did all the reamping and everything. It's uh, we'll go through it. You know the drums are are a, a virtual instrument, as is the bass. I tracked all the guitars. It was quad cortex for the guitars. Um, but then I sent it off to Jens Bogren to have it mastered, and he just absolutely killed it on the master. So we're gonna walk through the mixing aspect of it. So what you hear me playing back from Pro Tools is just the mix it doesn't have the mastering in it so it might sound a little bit different from what you hear on like itunes or or um, apple music or spotify or whatever oh you're a night owl excellent all right cool so let's uh get pro tools up here and let me switch over to that now all right, so you should be seeing Pro Tools with a little bit of me in the bottom corner. And if I start cutting anything off from my video, I can I can get rid of my video. So, but I figured I'll leave it there for now. All right. So with that, two things. One, I want you to tell me if this is okay resolution. I know the text on Pro Tools is just na by it, natively, it's just super super small. Even when I zoom things in, it's just they they built things wicked small. So don't worry about the wicked small text. That's like over here on the left or on the right. Um, really what I wanna know is like, if I open a plugin, you know, can you see that mostly okay? All right, and if you can see that okay, then that's excellent. That's all we really need. Uh, and then the other thing is, how is the audio? We did a, I did a quick test yesterday and things came, up, came through okay, but how is it sounding for you now? We'll do a quick sample. All right, is that audio? Does that sound okay? All good. Excellent. Audio sounds okay. All right, perfect. Well, then we're gonna go ahead and get started. And the way I did this last time uh, was I basically just started at the top with my main bus, some people call it the two bus, and just worked my way down from there, uh, working, working backwards, basically. But what I'd be curious about uh, yes, uh, mother, his mother, Inc. <laughs> I see the, the, the name there. Uh, you're asking, will you please leave the stream as a video later? The answer is yes. Uh, this will, this is all being recorded. And after the stream ends, this will all be just on the channel. You can go back and watch it at any point. Um, and I'll even go through and I'll put like the little time markers in it. So like, as we're going through different buses or looking at drums or guitar, I'll have those markers so you can quickly jump through them. Uh, Dino's channel. Thank you so much for the, for the comment there. You, you said, I discovered your channel and it's gold. Well, thank you. Uh, my, that is my, that's all I can do is just try to try to <laughs> provide some value in the, in the overcrowded YouTube space. So, uh, hopefully you, you find value in this, but what I want to do is walking through the mix. We'll go ahead and get started now. But what I want to know from you all is 
what do you want to start with? So instead of me just starting at like the two bus and working backwards, um, is there something you just want me to jump right into? Is it the buses, the top level two buses, the main buses? Is it the, the drum mix? Is it the bass? Is it the guitars? Is it the vocals? Y'all, y'all, uh, hit the comments and just tell me where, what you want me to start with. And, uh, whatever gets the most votes is where, where I will start. Joey, I see the comment. Welcome, Joey. Start with each instrument solo. Oh, God. <laughs> drums, I see a couple for drums. For me, everything is a lesson, so whatever people like. Then build up with the mixing and all. To be all informative. Yeah, okay. Okay, so you're saying, uh, you, when you say start with each instrument solo, you say bypass all the effects so that it just sounds like craziness and then add the the plugins and everything that I did. How do you typically start a mix? Oh, Finn, that's a great question. I, that is a great question actually. I, I typically start with a bit of top-down processing. It's not like full-on hardcore top-down processing as you've probably seen from folks like, I don't know, I know Nolly is probably kind of you know, most popular for top down mixing stuff. Um, but I'll put up a, a little bit of thing, some stuff. Um, I have, uh, some outboard 500 rack gear over here. I'll put some of this stuff on it. It's just like some EQ and a little bit of compression and on my, uh, on my, uh, instrument bus. And, and that's basically the extent of the top down. I don't really start with much on like the effects or the vocals and I'll kind of add those later. Um, and then I usually start a mix with the drums and I see a few people have mentioned drums. Balancing tracks. Are you going to do any sort of top down mixing? Into the oh yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Top down from raw to mixed. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and let's just jump to the drums. How about, how about we do this? We'll, we'll do the drums. Then we'll kind of work down from the session from there. Cause that's typically the way I mix. I start with the drums, then I do the bass because you got the kick drum and your bass, which are all kind of eating up the low end and you got to kind of balance those out well. Um, so I usually start with the drums and the bass, then the guitars, then the vocals. And then I'll circle back to my top level buses, like the instrument, uh, main effects, main vocal main, and then the two bus and kind of adjust things there. Um, so let's just, let's just jump to the drums. So here we go. One thing I want to point out here real quick that you're seeing, um, you're seeing a purple here, right here, and then these two greens. Um, this green and this purple were previous mixes of the drums that I decided I didn't like as much as this third one. Um, and, and often what would happen is because there's five songs on this EP, and then they all kind of use the same drum mix. As I continued working on the songs, I would make little tweaks here and there to the drums, and decide I like it better. And one of the, the things that I, I liked about Pro Tools at the time, I've kind of switched back to Logic since then, but one of the things that I liked is, um, and I actually forget how you do it now, <laughs> it's been so long, um, but you can save an entire track preset, which includes the, let me see if I right click, is it, is it this? Yeah, right here, okay. So this right here, save track preset. What this will do is it will save this bus and all of the individual tracks, all of the plugins, all of the levels, all even the automation, like everything. Um, it saves all of the information from this bus and all of the tracks within it. So if I open this up, you'll see there's actually quite a number of tracks in here. All these are the individual tracks that make up the drums. And we'll go through all of those in just a second. Um, but what I was saying is you can uh, save track preset and then later you can come back in Pro Tools later and say track new and then go here and i've even got like myself a little folder so if i go to drums i can then choose you know like invasion drums three and hit create and then it would actually create everything you see here the bus with all of the plugins the levels all of these individual sub buses and, and tracks um which made it really handy so like as i was later down the line you know in three or three or four songs in and, and making changes i could go back to the first couple i did 
and just say create new track and just load everything up exactly how it was. So that was really nice. So that that is why you're seeing these couple here and why I'm not going to go over them because they were just previous mixes. I, I just really kind of need to hide them or get rid of them. Um, so this is the one we're going to look at here. And we'll start at the... We'll start, we'll start at the bus here and I'll just kind of show you what's going on at the drum bus. And then we'll kind of go into the individual tracks and I'll be sure to bypass all of the plugins and let you hear what it sounds like on each track. And then we'll add them back. Uh, so on the drum bus, there's really not a ton happening. There's just a very, I think this is doing almost nothing. Let me just play this back real quick and we'll take a look. So this is just more kind of a, like a last bit of leveling on the drums just to kind of even any any big spikes out or anything, just just even things out, smooth it out just a little bit. Um, and then from there we have a limiter, which you should absolutely be using on really all your buses, like all your your, your final buses for, for all your all your, all your um, like subgroups. So your, your drums, your bass, your guitar, every vocals, everything. Um, yeah, Vinny, I, I see you, you love this comp that the, the, uh, townhouse bus comp here from Plugin Alliance is fantastic. Uh, but you should, you should absolutely be using a limiter and this just prevents, um, overdoing things in your, in your top level main buses or even your two bus compressor. Um, so like when you get, when you get up to those top levels, you've got your drums, you've got your bass, you've got your guitar, your vocals, everything going into it. And if you're not limiting your subgroups, you're gonna hit it and overload the compression and it's just gonna make things duck and sound weird. Um, so we can see if, they're, if we're hitting any limiting here. So I mean, it's, it's way off. So there, there's nothing to even, I probably should have pulled this way back. So it's not doing much. Now we'll go ahead and we'll just jump down into kind of the subgroups I have in the drums before we get to the individual tracks. And I'm trying to keep an eye on the chat to see if there's any questions here. Can you tell me the names of the plugins? Yes, sorry. Um, so the, like I said, the first one here, this is the town, the BX townhouse bus compressor. This is, you can get this from Plugin Alliance. Um, and then this other one is the BX limiter. Uh, there is, there's a couple different limiters uh, from Plugin Alliance. There's a BX true peak limiter. This one is just the BX underscore limiter. Um, and it's just very quick and simple to use. Um, you have, you can increase volume that's coming in here. You pull back to the point you want the limiting to happen. And then you just got a couple things up here. You can add their XL, which is a form of saturation if you want. I don't really ever use it because I have all my saturation kind of in the mix before it gets to this. Um, you can blend it. Uh, output dim just pulls back the level a little bit. You can adjust the release. I don't even remember what the channel link does, but I, I have never used it. So that's the BX limiter. Uh, and then from there, we've got the subgroups, which I have the shells and cymbals. So this is all of the, sh the drum shells going into the shells bus and the cymbals going into the cymbals. I think the one exception on the cymbals is possibly the rooms. Let me double check and see. I think I sent the rooms to cymbals. Let's see. Where's the rooms? Room. Oh, no. No, okay, so it's just going straight to drums. So I guess I couldn't decide whether it should go to shells or cymbals because it has both in the room. So I just sent it to drums. So it's bypassing them. So we can just quickly listen to, let's see if I can solo the shells here. Nope, let's see, do this. All right, we'll get to it in a second. Trust me, it's just, it's just the shells. So this is just the shells and just the symbols. So we can look at what's happening here. And actually I can do this. Let me just mute the symbols. Maybe this will just kind of give us a second. Below the drums. Yeah, there we go. Now we got to the Okay, so what you're looking at here is the SSL native drum strip. Uh, and so this has a few different things built into it. It has a noise gate, it has a transient shaper, and I want to point out that if this button is is not like pressed in and lit up, it's it's off. So I'm not using the noise gate or the transient shaper. Um, however, I am using the low frequency enhancer, the high frequency enhancer, and the listen mic compressor. 
Um, and the last thing I want to point out is down here, you can actually change the order in which these individual sections are like processing. Um, and I did move the listen mic compressor in front of the high and low frequency enhancer because I wanted to compress before I added all this like additional saturation before it went, you know, before all that saturation goes into the compressor because it's going to overload the compressor even more. Um, so that's why I just kind of moved that there. Uh, and you can see there's really not a lot that's happening here. So we've, we're only pushing the low frequency enhancer 18%, the high frequency enhan enhancer not even 12%. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and bypass the whole plugin and I'll let you listen to the shells without it. And then I'll turn it back on so you can hear the difference. So the, the very first thing that I want to point out there is you, you can hear how the, the top, the high frequency enhancer kind of adds a little bit more snap on you, know, even the kick and the snare, but really this listen mic compressor is fantastic. You can see I've got it mixed in at like 57% because it sounds so good. Um, and it just really made those things come to life and it adds all that kind of sustain and makes them sound big. So if I just turn this off and turn it back on, you'll hear the difference. Yeah, so I love that. All right, let me jump in the chat real quick and just see. Can you tell the names of the I did? Okay, why did do you, why do you send effects to one individual bus instead of sending all effects to each instrument bus? Um, I'm not sure I follow there. Why do you send effects to one individual bus instead of sending all effects to each instrument bus? So I have. I'm not sure exactly I follow, but I have kind of multiple layers of buses happening here. So I have like my subgroup of drums here. So this is my drums bus. Uh, and then under that I have, this is technically like an aux or a, or a bus. So this is receiving signal from multiple, from multiple tracks, um, from the shells tracks. And then the cymbals is also like an aux or a sub bus or a subgroup that's receiving signal from multiple cymbal tracks, like hi-hat, ride cymbal, overhead, stuff like that. Um, so I want those all separated so that I can process, process them individually because I don't want to, I don't want the same sort of processing on cymbals as I do the drum shells, if that makes sense. Um, I hope that somewhat answers your question. If not, um, let me know. So with that, I'm going to keep moving on. So there is the drum strip and then we'll move on to the cymbals, which is also using the drum strip. And so here we got, we're doing less of the low frequency enhancement. Um, but because in the overheads you do get a little bit of, you know, the, the kick drum and things like that, um, I found just a touch, just a little smidge of this low frequency enhancement here, just kind of rounded things off the way that I liked it. Um, and we're pushing the top end frequency uh, or the top end enhancer a little bit more. So this is at almost 24%. You can see I'm pushing the drive up a little bit and the, the, the Hertz here, we were at uh, 7,800 Hertz. Um, so and then the one th another thing I want to point out here specifically is this is one of the main reasons I, I want to process my cymbals and my shells separately is because I don't like compressing the cymbals a whole lot. Um, as you can see, I've got the listen mic compressor at only 14% here. Uh, and that's because if, you, if you're compressing the, the cymbals the same as you are your shells, you're going to get a lot of that whoosh, like washiness in the cymbals versus kind of the attack. Um, and I didn't want that. So... Let me uh, play this back with it off and then I'll turn it on and let me make sure we're just listening to the cymbals. Yeah, you can see how those just kind of come to life when you turn that on. And that's basically all this high frequency enhancer. So like, listen to the difference in this. Yeah, it's, it's fantastic what this thing does. All right, moving on. Kick verb. Uh, so this is just basically a little bit of uh, reverb for my kick drum. Uh, and actually, let me just kind of quickly run through the different kick things that we have happening here, just to kind of give you more context. We have the kick verb, just which is just adds a little bit of reverb to it. We have a kick sum, which sums uh, a couple different tracks here. So this is the... 
uh, the, the kick drum out of GGD Invasion. So let me open this and you can see we've got a uh, full kit. So this is the setup I used for Invasion. Uh, I think I started with this low tuned Brute uh, preset you can see here and then just kind of customize it to my liking. Uh, and then let's see, we have the Ludwig Black Beauty snare. Yep, go away. Uh, Pearl Master Birch snare. Uh, and you can see it's just the low tune toms, the red ones. Uh, and then from there, we have the, if I scroll down in contact, you can see we have the uh, Bogren Digital drum samples. So we're using those. And then we're using on the snare, we have, we have also have the uh, 40 Sounds Middle Farm Studio snares. And it looks like I muted this one, the Brady snare. So I'm using the Pearl snare here. And then we're also using the toms uh, from Bogren Digital. And then we're using some snare samples here from Bogren Digital and the Harder Please Kick from Bogren Digital. So this kick two is the Bogren Digital kick. The kick one here is the GGD kick. So I've taken both of these, processed them, and then I'm routing them into this, uh, this kick sum so I can sum them together. So looking at what I did for GGD. So here is the Lindell plugin 50 series. And so this is not doing a whole lot. You can see it like the, I don't even think there's probably anything happening on the compressor. Just a little bit of EQ, pulling back a little bit of lows, some of the boxy mids, and then I, it, this had a lot more snap than I wanted, so I kind of pulled that back. Uh, and then from the Bogren, the Bogren kick, again, not a lot here, but again, just a little bit more snap than I wanted. So that's essentially it. So if we just kind of listen to the kick here, make sure we're unmuting the shells. Okay, and so if I bypass these two plugins, I mean, you can see it just kind of gets crazy because I'm also pulling back the level in here. So the, the level's gonna come up, but there is the individual kick. So not a lot happening on those, but then we go into the kick bus and I'll pull these plugins up. So we have the SSL bus comp. How often do you do this live? I want to make time to watch the whole thing next time. Did the drum multi-track? Okay, so two questions just came in real quick. Um, the live thing, uh, this is to Dino's channel. Um, the live thing, this is really only kind of like the second one that I've done publicly. I did do one other one as like a trial. Uh, so this is, that was uh, unlisted. And so this is kind of like the third time. Um, I'm hoping to do it more often as I have uh, you know, time to do it. So maybe I can try to do this like once a month or something like that and see how it goes. Um, but I, yeah, I'm hoping to do it more often. Uh, and then Jyothish, did the drum multitracks include sample blends or were they just invasion? They were just invasion. Yeah. So the, what I sent you was just invasion. Um, because I felt like the, 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 the GGD was kind of like the, the multitracks for the drums. Right. And then the adding the samples part was, I kind of felt was more kind of like the mixing phase because um, that's where you as like a mix engineer would say, all right, well, GGD isn't giving me exactly what I want or what I'm hearing in my head. How can I augment this? What else can I do to add what I'm hearing in my head, what I want? And that's where samples come in. That's why I didn't include them. Um, but yeah, good question. So then looking at the, the kick sum again, yeah, just keep, Questions coming. If you have them, I'll, I'll jump to the questions when they come in. So kick some. We have this SSL bus comp. We'll just kind of quickly see what kind of gain reduction we're getting. Not a ton. It's probably upwards of max about 2 dB. Uh, and then we have low control, which is from Black Salt Audio, which is one of the sponsors of Monthly Mix, in fact. Um, so if you win a, month, a monthly mix, you get uh, any, two bo uh, two, any two Black Salt Audio plugins of your choice any two audio salt plugins of your choice and any Bogren digital plugin of your choice. I think I've got that right. So this is low control and this is just great because it's got a, a low frequency uh, compressor, which you dial in here. You can just uh, set your threshold here. You set the, the frequency you want it to compress at and below here. And then you have, it'll show you the gain reduction. Um, and then this enhancement or the enhanced side here is just, it just adds low frequency harmonics or saturation to help those low frequencies cut through better, uh, especially on smaller devices. So if I just kind of quickly play this back and we'll turn it off and turn it back on. So this is off. It, 
And you can see when I go into the double kick, I really pull the threshold down to compress the hell out of the low end because what I found, and this is actually feedback I got directly from Jens on the mix was during the, uh, during the double kick parts, the low end could get a little, a little too much and just kind of build up and get just, it just kind of overkills everything. Uh, so when you, so you can see, I've got the automation here. So when it goes into the double kick, I just pulled the threshold down, uh, so that it gets, so that it, uh, compresses more. So in fact, if I go kind of near the end of this section, you should see the compress the threshold go back up right there. You saw it go back up. So you can see looking at between here, watch it's about to go down. There it goes down and then back up. Right. So, uh, any point where there was going to be multiple kicks hitting, like maybe four or more in a row real fast, I pulled that down to compress the low end more. Um, so that's what it's doing. But it's it's bypassed here. So let me turn it back on. Or no, it was on. Sorry. Without it, you should be able to hear maybe some of the low end. If you have a sub or something with good speakers, you should be able to hear the low end a little bit more. I, it's just night and day to me like how it how it it add, it almost adds like it, it makes it hit harder too i love that just the way the compression hits on that low end and then of course the enhance here and we're not doing a ton but it just makes the low end hit so much harder i love it uh and then moving on from there we have pro q and this is a you know this is just this is pretty low i mean it's at 22 hertz um but this is just to kick uh get rid of anything that's just super subby and low on the kick here that i don't want it's just too low and then we have the Black Soul Audio Clipper, and this is just to uh, this is just a great thing to do, especially in any sort of heavy music like metal, deathcore, especially this um, clipping the drums. It adds additional harmonics and saturation. It just kind of really, especially on like the top end, you it you, it really helps kind of those like the the beater snap and the, on on the kick come out a little bit more. Um, it just I like the way that it sounds with the additional saturation. So I'll I'll bypass this and then I'll turn it back on. And of course, it's going to go into a section where there's no damn kick. All right, let me go over here. Yeah, it, you can clearly hear that difference there. It just adds a little bit more harmonics to it, a little bit, <clears throat> which makes the snap come out a little bit more. Just sounds beefier overall. All right, so that is the the kick sum with the two individual kick tracks, and then you can see we're sending to the kick verb. So let me see, was that I think that was playing? Yeah. So you're, you should also be hearing the kick verb here. So if I mute this, yeah, you can, you can clearly hear how that just kind of adds a little bit of ambience to the, to the kick. Um, I'm not looking for a ton, but just to kind of open it up, make it sound not just so kind of static, just, just real quick hits. It just opens it up a little bit. So there's the kick. So the same exact thing is happening with the snare. So we have the snare verb and then the snare sum. And you can see I have a lot more snares that we're working with here. Um, really there's four. There's the GGD snare, the Bogren digital snare. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, the GGD snare top, GGD snare bottom, Bogren digital snare, and then the Middle Farm Studio snare. So there's kind of three snares, a top and a bottom mic on the GGD. Sounds great, that clipper is exactly what I need in my mixes, yeah. That it's it's awesome. And I, you just you just won it. So yeah, congratulations on winning. Actually, this month the the Broken Mirror mix, Jyothish won that. So congrats, Jyothish. Um. So yeah, and I I believe you chose the Clipper as one of your uh, winning plugins. So enjoy that. All right. And so the snare again. It's the exact same thing. We've got there we go. Snare verb and then a snare sum, which sums up all the individual snares. So kind of quickly running through the snares. This is the GGD snare top. Um. So. This is something, all right, so hang on, I gotta, I gotta do this. If Joey's on, he knows what I'm about to do. All right, here we go. It's time for another cave of wonders. I, I hope y'all got that audio effect. 
I hope that came through. <laughs> and I know there's a bit of a delay, so I have to wait and see if uh, if you even heard <laughs> if you even heard that stupid audio effect. Joey, did it did it come through? I see the LMAO. I hope it came through okay. Nailed it. All right. It worked. <laughs> yeah, so just a stupid little tidbit about the, the stream here. Um, my mic is going into my quad cortex. So that's actually what's processing all my, vi my, my voice before it goes into the computer and then into OBS. So I've got uh, a noise gate, EQ, compressor all happening right here for me. But I obviously, because it's quad cortex, I also get pitch shifting and reverb and shit like that. So uh, I figured it'd be fun to throw some stuff in like that. So this is this is kind of one of the, the the knowledge bombs, if you will, that um, was was just like a, a you know head explosion moment for me was learning how to use a transient designer or transient shaper, uh, especially when it comes to drums, especially on a snare drum, um, because a lot of times you you hear these snare drums and they're just very, very, very short, just real, all transient, just smack, right? Um, so let me give you an example. Let me bypass all these plugins and let's just listen to this GGD snare top. Let me make sure I don't have anything else. All right, let's see. Oh, you know what? We're, we're still processing through, through this. So I need to get rid of all these plugins here. I can do that. All right, now this is just the snare top from GGD. You hear, I mean, it's just all transient. There's almost no sustain in it whatsoever. Um, so then what we do is we pull out a transient designer or a transient shaper. And in this case, I'm using the Bo Boz Digital Labs Transgressor 2. Uh, and the things I really wanna point out are this dial up here next to transient and this dial up here next to sustain. Um, so what this does is it allows you to pull back or increase the transient and then pull back or increase the sustain independently. And you have the uh, release right here, this knob down here that I'm turning, I hope you can see which one I'm turning. Um, this one is where you can actually dial in how much of the transient you're affecting and how much of the sustain you're affecting. Um, so in fact, if I just uncheck and turn off the sustain, you can just hear the transient itself. So listen to this. That just super quick snap, that's just the transient. So if I turn that off and listen to the sustain, this is what you get. You hear that? How it's just like a bong, bong, but there's no real snap to it. And that's because we we're missing the actual transient. So as you can see, what I did is I've pulled back the transient. I've, I'm looking down here in the very bottom, very bottom right hand corner of the plugin shows you how much. So I'm pulling it back and I don't know if you can read it or not, but it says I'm negative 6.6 .6 dB. I'm increasing the sustain by 7.2 dB. So again, if I bypass this and then enable it, listen to the difference. Now it's almost starting to sound like a snare drum, right? So it's got a little bit of a, a ring to it, a little bit, a little bit more sustain. So again, like listen to this. I mean, that's it's just night and day the difference there. Just that one plugin. So that was absolutely the very first thing I knew I had to do here because that that GGD snare was just very transient heavy. Um, and then the next thing I'm doing on this is. Again, the Lind uh, and I forgot to mention this earlier. This is the Lindell 50 series plugin from Plugin Alliance. So here we're just basically doing a little bit of EQ. Looks like maybe a little bit of compression. Um, but so at 500 hertz, I'm really kind of pulling that back because it kind of got boxy. Pulling back a little bit of like the super highs, 20 kil uh, 20 kilohertz, boosting up a little bit of 5k, and at 1k just to add a little bit of beef to the snare. So if you bypass this and then play it back. Let me try if I get a better spot over here. Yeah, so you can hear a lot of the kind of the mid boxy area at 500K kind of that got rolled off. We got a little bit more beef um, and the level kind of came down just a little bit because you can see I'm pulling back the level here. So then we go into, let's see, Pro-Q, what are we doing here? So this is adding 
some beef again at like 151. I just, I guess I'm, I found I just needed a little bit more beef in the snare. And then I'm pulling back a bunch of ringing frequencies. So let's see if we can identify where, what was happening here. I mean, you can almost see them as it's, as it's playing. So let me do this and. Yeah, you can really hear how, especially on those single hits there, where it just, where it's not doing the fast hits, uh, it, you kind of get those the ring. So it just kind of helped tame a little bit of that ring. It was just a little bit too much. So that's what's going on there now. Ex limiter. So limiting the individual snare itself. Let's see what we're doing. So this is just kind of rolling off a little bit more of that initial attack from the transient. I must have, I, I guess at this point I thought it's still a little bit too much. That initial attack is too much and I would just limit it. And so that's all it's doing here. All right. And then the snare bottom only has a Lindell 50 series on it. And we're just doing kind of the same EQ and a, pretty much the same compression boosting up. A little bit of the lows, pulling back the boxy mids, boosting up 5K, pulling back the top end. So let's solo this. It's very quiet. I don't like a lot of bottom uh, in, in the mixes there. It's just, you know, if I'm doing stuff like jazz, right? Like you want kind of that sizzled stuff in it, but not in deathcore. <laughs> I just want the, the, the smack. Uh, let's see. Yeah, okay. Thought there was a question, but there's not. I'm gonna keep going. So we combine both of these two together. This is the GGD snare. Okay, so there is that. And then we go into the Bogren digital snare. So bypassing these plugins. And we'll just kind of take a look at them first here. So this is Lindell 50 series doing almost nothing. It looks like I just rolled back a little bit of the top end. Maybe there's a little bit more sizzle in it than I wanted. So I just rolled that back. Pro Q again, just kind of some ring and even pulled back a little bit more of the top end. And again, limiting just to, to get rid of some of the initial attack. So let's, uh, let's hear what it sounds like without these plugins. Okay. And then with the plugins. Yeah. And the other thing to note is I pulled back the level in uh, the Lindell 50 series, which is why it was louder when I had them bypassed, but there you go. So if we put those three together, now we're getting closer to the final snare sound. Okay, and then the last sample was the 40 Sounds Middle Farm Studio sample. So again, I'm gonna bypass these. We'll kind of run through what I did. Um, so this one I found had a lot of mid range in it and it was like right around 500 Hertz. So I pulled that back almost 6 dB boosted up uh, 100 Hertz to give it some more beef and didn't touch the top end. And uh, there might be some correct, com some hardcore compression happening here. I've got it on the limiting ratio. So we'll take a look at what's going on there. I've got the level pulled back a little bit, quite a bit of ring happening here. And again, pulling back some of these upper mids, boosting the lows and then doing some limiting. So let's uh, see what this sounds like without, and then we'll turn these on. I mean, just right off the bat, you can hear all the mids in that, right? So turn this one on. Huge difference right there in just that one plugin. Um, but then all the ring we're about to get rid of in Pro-Q. And then adding and limiting. Just rolling off a little bit of that transient, a little bit of the attack. So now if we put it all together, and you can hear I've got this one mixed in uh, quite a bit less than the other one. So this one's just kind of adding a little bit of shaping to, this, to the sound, not a whole lot. So if we listen to all four of these. Now we are closer to the final snare and 
now it's time to look at the bus because there's actually a lot that's happening here. And the first is this virtual mix rack with the incredible uh, FG stress. Uh, so this is, what is this, the distressor. So this is based on a distressor. The hardware version is called a distressor um, from Empirical Labs, I believe. Uh, and so this is a Slate Digital. This is, it's just for anyone who's not familiar, this is uh, the plugin suite is from Slate Digital. This is called the Virtual Mix Rack. And then you've got all these individual things you can pull in over here. So like if I just grab one and pull it in, you, you know, this is the FG2A compressor, right? So the only thing I have here is the FG Stress. And I'm really crushing this thing. Uh, you can see I've got the attack or the, uh, the ratio on Nuke. Uh, and I've got the mix all the way up and I've got the attack almost like almost all the way up, the release almost all the way down. And this is just again to give me some insane smack, right? Because which is why I have the, the uh, I'm sorry, the slowest attack and the fastest release to give me a slow attack so that it doesn't compress the initial transient, but then it compresses really hard and just lets that sustain, it brings out more sustain in the snare. So if I play this back and unbypass this, what we should hear is all of a sudden the snare just sound like it's hitting 10 times harder and get more sustain as well. Let me solo just the snare. I mean, is that not just like, I should have done the whole Cave of Wonders thing because the, I mean, that's just literally crazy to me how this one plugin makes it sound like you have someone with a stick going like this, donk, donk, donk. And then you're telling them, hey dude, no, hit it way harder. And they're like, bam, bam, bam. I mean, it, it's, it's crazy it, how it literally sounds like it was played different. Right? All right, so that is the virtual mix rack. And that is on my bus, uh, the, the snare sum, which is for all the four snares coming together. Um, then we go into spiff, and all I'm doing is using Nolly's, in fact, this is a, a from, from Nolly, uh, his beefy snare preset, which just kind of boosts around 100 hertz and below. Um, and I've pulled back the depth. I think the depth when he has it is probably right up around here. Or so I've pulled it back quite a ways because I already added some beef to my snare. Um, so I've just rolled back the depth, which is basically like the mix knob, how much of it's being blended in. Um, and so here, if we go and we'll bypass this and turn it back on, you should hear some more low end beef coming through when I turn this on. It's subtle, it's very subtle. You can see I've got the, the depth, like or the mix pulled way back, but you can see it kind of boosting up a little bit of the low end there. Um, and Spiff is kind of a transient designer too. So it's not just like adding low end to an EQ. It's actually helping it like translate the low end to where it hits harder too, right? Because it's kind of like a transient shaper. Uh, and then from there we have Pro Q3 pulling out a little bit more ring. Let's see if we can solo this and hear what I was hearing here. Just a little bit of ring there. I guess I just didn't like the little bit more ring that, that was coming together when I when you got all these four snares summed together. I got a little bit more ring. Just pulled that out. And then the BSA Clipper. Um, this is the last thing which really kind of just brought the whole snare tone together. Uh, and so when I turn this on, you're going to hear just a massive difference. You can see how I'm really boosting the input. I've got the, the clipper here at negative 7.4 dB, so it's gonna chop quite a bit off this snare. But the idea here is to chop off a lot of that initial, uh, the very, very early transient, which is like very, very sharp and snappy, and turn that into harmonic saturation, and you can hear it in the snare. So check this out. Yeah, huge difference there. All right, so let me see if we have a question on the snare samples. I see you have some ones you tried there, but you ended up not using. What do you look for when layering samples? Um, let me see, what was I using? Snare. Oh, 
Yeah, so there was a su supersonic and a, and a wanker. Uh, you gotta love the Bogren Digital uh, names on everything. Um, so that's a great question. Like when, when I'm when I'm trying to layer samples, what I'm looking for are things that complement each other. So if I'm listening to one snare and I hear it has a really great like top end transient snap to it, but maybe missing some of the low end uh, beef. Instead of just kind of going and just boosting the hell out of the snare, like in, with an EQ or something, um, I'll go and try to find a sample that can augment that low end that just has it built in. And then one other note about layering samples is make sure that you are, uh, make sure you are to tuning the snares, right? And so there, any sampler plugin, like I'm, I'm using uh, the, the, let me just pull it up again in contact i think it's up here on my kick track in contact you have this tune option here you can turn this up or down the one i'm most familiar with is what's what you get in trigger two uh from slate slate digital so you can you can turn you can adjust the tuning there as well but you want to make sure that uh you're adjusting the tuning so that it's kind of it matches your main snare because if you have your main snare tuned to one thing and your samples are tuned to something else, it's just not gonna sound right. Um, they'll they'll sit better if they're tuned together, but then also make sure you're watching out for phase issues, which is um, the easiest way to prevent that is to just print your samples and you can actually just zoom in and look at things and make sure they're line, you know, you get your, all your peaks and valleys lining up because if they're not, it just, they're gonna, it's just gonna kill your, your, your sound. So make sure you're watching out for those too. Uh, let's see. So let's keep trucking here. So that's the snare. The toms is really not a ton to go over, but let's, let's actually start with the individual tracks. So, um, this is the, these, all of these here are a blend of GGD and, uh, the Bogren digital toms. Let me just go show you which ones it was. So in contact we have scroll down, you can see. Helms Deep. So those are the, the ones that I used here. So you can see that they, how you've got this twosome toms, Reginald and Helms Deep. And I went with the Helms Deep toms. Um, and so unlike the snare where I had the, 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 the Bogren snare routed out to its own track so that I could mix it in the DAW here, what I decided to do with the toms was do a pre-blend in contact and then just route both of the GGD toms and the Bogren Digital Toms out to the corresponding tracks, so like Tom One, and each one goes out to one track in the G in the DAW. Um, and I think that was mainly because they just kind of blended naturally really well, so I didn't need to do a ton individually. So looking at each track here, I mean this this just proves it right here. I mean you can just look at the EQ. I literally didn't touch anything except for pulled back like maybe one one and a half dB on 500 hertz, right on Tom One. And so looking at the rest of these exact same thing i expect to fully yeah so this one's just pulled back a little bit more of the of the boxy mids tom five a little bit more of the boxy mids so kind of as it gets down i pulled back, back a little bit more yep and same thing with the tom six i pulled back even just a little bit more of those boxy mids but that's basically all that i did on the toms was just pull back a little bit of the boxy mids and of course running them through this api channel strip emulation um, it's going to naturally, because it has this preamp section, it's going to naturally change things up very, very, very slightly. Um, and that's that's basically why I like running the, the drums through these, these, these channel strip emulations, just because you, you kind of get some of that natural uh, saturation or variance from the individual channels in there. Uh, and so I'm just going to go to the Tom's bus now, and we'll kind of look at what's going on here. All right, so Saturn. So we have Fab Filter Saturn, which is a way to add saturation. And here I'm using warm tape. And actually, let me stop real quick because I see some stuff. Questions, uh, let's see, on vacation, I have to leave, but definitely keep an eye on your channel. Dude, thank you. Uh, I used the exact same Bogren samples for Tom's. Sick, yeah, those, not only because there were six of them, but they just sounded so good and I thought they blended so well with uh, with with the, the GGD Tom's. Um, so then, here we go on my snare sum, which is what, this is the bus that receives the signal from all the individual toms. So I'm doing Saturn here and I'm doing some warm tape at 
171 hertz and above, we're adding some saturation, which I think is just to kind of uh, tame any strong, super strong transients, because when you add saturation, it does kind of roll off some of those transients just a little bit and like the top end. Um, but then I also wanted this because it adds that saturation to the top end so that the stick attack and things like that come through a little bit stronger. Uh, and then just a little bit less of the warm tape saturation on the low end. And then we go into low control again, just pulling this, this down to tame the, the, like the low tom, low toms, those things ring out forever um, to compress that suit, those super lows below 80 Hertz. Add a touch of low end uh, harmonics here to make sure that they cut through well, on, even on smaller speakers and the bus comp SSL bus comp. So let's see what kind of gain reduction we're getting. I got to go find where, where the hell do I have some toms in this thing? There was some right there. So maybe one and a half to two dB of gain reduction. And then what's the last? Ah, clipper. Yeah, of course. So again, the clipper, just to roll off transients uh, and add that harmonic saturation, which just kind of helps these things cut through, adds even more top end like stick attack. So let's go ahead and bypass all of these on the bus and see what it sounds like. Still sounds pretty good, right? So they just sound, they just sound more clean, if you will. So we turn on Saturn. Now we get a little bit more of that, that top end stick attack. We add low control. We get more low end focus, more low end control. Bus comp. Now they get just a little bit more punchy with that SSL bus comp and then the BSA clipper. And that you can see I'm really, I'm boosting this input up 4.6 and chopping these pretty good. So that just really adds a nice harmonic saturation of to those toms. Uh, it kind of dirties them up a little bit so they don't sound quite as clean as they did without it. So there is the toms. Let's see what we got left for the drums. The rooms. So let's go ahead and start by bypassing this and then we'll start with, all right, let me see. So, okay, so the way I did this is I have, I, what this track is called Contact Rooms. It's basically just the rooms from GGD. So it's it's the, the, out, the, the individual um, room tracks from GGD and the, and, and Invasion, you get rooms close and rooms far. Um, so that's what's coming into this track. Then we have the Bogren Digital snare here, snare room. So this is the, uh, the let, me, let me show you. <laughs> It'll be easier to show you. So we go into contact. What I did is you can see we have two uh, of the snare drums here. So we have a super nice and a wanker. The super nice, or super nice, that is going to the snare, the, like in my snare bus. That's, the, that's the, like the snare, the, the main snare, you know, a mic right on a snare. Uh, and then the wanker is actually the, the, the uh, ambience. Pickley on, maybe, maybe, no, okay, I lied, I lied. Um, snare. Uh, this, the, the Bogren digital snare is super nice and, and no, it's not super nice. That one's muted. Scroll down more, Jeremy. Wanker is the snare top, the direct, the pick, pick all on, pick all on, however the hell you say it is going to the room track. That is the ambience. So, and why is that? It's because I found, I didn't like the ambience from Wanker as much as I did from the, the other snare tracks, like this pick -a -lon. Uh, so I sent this one out to my room track so that I could process it like a room or like it was part of the GGD rooms initially. So then if we scroll back down, we have that one. And then we have the same thing with the Middle Farm Studios uh, snare sample as well. I, I just took the room sample uh, the room track from that, uh, from that virtual instrument there, that sample, and routed out the rooms into here so that I could process it like, again, like it was part of the rooms track. So. Let's solo this individual rooms track from GGD and we'll bypass the Lindell 50 series. And you can see the only thing I'm really doing here is again, pulling back some of the boxy mids and rolling off a little bit of the top end. 
Ah, I've also got the FET compressor. One thing about this Lindell 50 series that I do really like is that you can swap it. It's almost like these they're 500 series modules that you can swap out. So you have a VCA comp or a FET compressor. I liked the FET compressor on the rooms because it rolls off transients really nicely. So let's have a listen to this. Okay, so that's the rooms without this on. Now let's turn it on. It got a whole lot quieter and that's because I've pulled the level way down here. So I'm, I'm not sending out as hot of a level. So that is the GGD rooms. Now we have the, I think it was the Piccolon, again, however the hell you say that, uh, from Fogren Digital. This is the snare sample. So again, the transgressor two, the transient shaper, what I'm doing here is pulling back a lot of the transient and just leaving the stain. In fact, I'm, I'm pulling back almost 20, it's like 18.2 dB on the transient from this room sample because I don't want a strong transient in my rooms. Oh, what the hell? <laughs> what do we got? A bot blowing up the chat now? Well, that's wonderful. Ignore the bot. I'm gonna keep going. If it gets crazy, I'll, have to, I'll see if I can add a moderator or something, but stupid ass bots. Um, all right, so let's see, why did we have to do it? Whatever. All right, so back on the Bogren Digital sample. Why is everything selected? Stop it. There we go. Let me turn these off. Yeah, I think everybody hates bots. <laughs> Stupid, man. Like, why? Uh, all right. So back on the sample. This is the Bogger Digital Piccolon uh, ambient sample. Let's go ahead and see what it sounds like soloed without the processing. Let me make sure I'm in a spot where it's playing. There we go. Okay. That's a really good sounding sample. So what I found is it has a strong transient. Thank you for reporting it. Thank you. Everyone report it. Stupid ass bots. Um, so it has a really strong transient that I didn't want because this is a room track. I have the, the main snare tracks. I wanted to get rid of the, tr the transient. So I added the transgressor too. Let's have a listen to this now with this unbypassed. Huge difference, right? I'll, I'll, I'll bypass it as it plays. I mean, massive difference, right? Rolling off all that transient. It makes it actually sound like it's more distant now too without that transient. So that's what I did there. And then the Lindell 50 series, again, rolling off top end, rolling back some of the boxy mids. That's essentially it. And pulling back the level here. And then the last one is the Middle Farm Studio snare uh, room sample. So let's go ahead and solo this without any plugins. Okay, that's what it sounds like. Now with Transgressor 2 to roll back all that transient. Makes it sound more distant, like more like a room. Here we go. Now the Lindell 50 series. And this one, you can see I rolled back the mids a ton, 9 dB, and even rolled back a lot of the top end. So listen to this. Huge difference. There was a lot of boxy mids in this around 500 Hertz. And then if we add in pro Q3, this is just going to get rid of some of the low end and some ring. All right. Those are the individual room tracks. Those go into the room. Some bus. Very first thing we have here is virtual mix rack again from slate digital. What are we doing? We are pulling back a little bit of the lows at like 80 Hertz and below. We're pulling it back about one dB. This is a Neve style um, EQ. And even little moves in this may make a huge difference, which is why I didn't even do one dB. Um, but I wanted to pull back a little bit of those lows before it hit the compressor because those, those lows will kind of tend to overload the compressor a little bit. Then we're doing the, uh, the FG stress again. You can see we're on nuke and some of these settings that are on down here with the high passes. We're blending. It looks like at 90%. And... 
the trimmer, I'm pulling back the level a good bit. So I'll play it back with it off and then turn this on. And you should really hear this whole room track come to life now. I really love crushing the hell out of the rooms. In fact, I've got the input gain all the way up and it's on nuke. So we should see almost like max gain reduction of like 26 dB on this and just crush the hell out of it to add sustain. Let's solo the rooms. Yeah, I mean, you can see how those just kind of come to life, right? Adds all that sustain, makes them sound big. So that's the room processing. And the last in the drums is the hi-hat. We're using the SSL channel strip two. Let's see what we're doing. A little bit of EQ. So it looks like I boosted up at like almost 18, uh, 18 kilohertz, boost that up about a one and a half dB. Uh, 1.5, looks like I pulled back around almost a half a dB. Jeez, at 500 hertz, pull, oh, okay, well it's a hi-hat. So I just pulled back a lot of the, the low mids and lows. So I'm pulling back a lot of that low end. So we've got a little bit of dynamics happening here, just a little bit of compression. And that's basically it that's going on there. Soothe 2, this is an absolutely magical plugin. Um, and this is just the harsh hi-hat preset. I, I don't remember who's, if this was a, okay, I don't know who that is. I thought maybe it was Nollies, but it's not. Um, but this is just one of those presets that comes with it and it's fantastic and it really makes a huge difference, especially if your hi-hat is pretty harsh. And then we have Pro-Q3, just kind of getting surgical with some top-end ringy nonsense that I didn't like. So got rid of those. And then this was a trick that uh, I found. I don't even remember where I found this. Someone had mentioned in, maybe it was like an Instagram story or something, Someone was asking, you know, how do you get that beautiful hi-hat, you know, nice top-end hi-hat sound? And they said, you have to try the, the Red 2 EQ. And this is from Focusrite. Uh, and you just add a little bit of that top-end shelf, and it's magic. And so I tried it, and I thought it sounded really damn good, so I kept it. So let's bypass all of these. Solo the hi-hat. And of course, that's the section where it's not playing. Let's see. Put it back here. There we go. All right. So that's without the plugins. Let's go ahead and add them back one at a time. So this is the channel strip two. So you can see that got rid of a lot of the kind of boxy stuff uh, down low, added a little bit of top end. And then soothe. Yeah, I mean, you can see that frequencies that it's pulling out. It sounds so good. Uh, and then we have some of the upper ringy nonsense that I, I guess I didn't like here. So let's just see what this is doing. And just so y'all know, it's been, it's probably been like five, six months since I've even looked at this session. So I'm kind of, <laughs> I'm just kind of remembering things as I pull up these plugins. So just bear with me. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna bypass this and then we'll play it back and turn it on. Or I'm sorry, it, it was unbypassed when I started it. Okay, so now it's bypassed. Okay, so it does sound a little bit smoother when I turn it on. Um, maybe there was this right around like 2K or something, there was some harshness here, especially maybe around 10K or something. So I'll leave that there. And then we have the, the focus right Red 2 EQ with the top shelf. I mean, do you, do you hear that? I mean, it just, it adds this smooth, silky top end to it. It is really nice. So bypass. I mean, it, it is nice. I like this. So there's a little trick for you. The Red 2 is fantastic on a hi-hat. And then we have the ride symbol, which the only thing I'm doing here is pulling back a little bit of the boxy mids and I added the FET compressor. This must just be to maybe the, some of that, uh, the, the ride kind of got a little bit transient heavy. This rolls off transients nicely, maybe add a little bit more sustain. Um, in fact, I don't even know if there's even a ride in this song anywhere. I don't remember if there is. Let's see if there's something over here. 
I don't think there's a ride in this. I can't recall anyway. So we'll move on. The effect symbols, let's see what's... Okay. So this is like the China and stuff like that, I think. Uh, all right, so Lindell 50 series, adding some, some nice top end here with the 20 hertz boost at about two and a half dB. Pulling back a little bit of 1.5, pulling back some of the lows. Obviously, these are symbols. I don't need some of the boxy mids and the lows in here. Adding the FET compressor again to roll off transients, add a little bit more sustain. Uh, and so let's bypass this. And the next thing is soothe. Again, just kind of making it a little bit easier on the ear. Uh, just kind of soothes any harshness. So let's play this back with them bypassed. And then I'll turn them on one at a time. So this is the Lindell. And you can see the level, I'm pulling back the level, which is why it got a little bit quieter. And then soothe. It's not doing a ton, but it's pulling back a little bit of that harshness. And then the last thing is the overheads. If I make session open and I can confirm that there is no ride. Okay, thank you. Thank you for confirming. <laughs> I thought I was going crazy for a minute. All right, so now we have overheads, and this is the last in the drum. So you can see we're boosting again at 20K, pulling back almost 4 dB and 1.5, and just really kind of pulling back the boxy low mids, 500 hertz, and then 100, we're pulling those back as well. I do have the, the built-in high pass engaged at 108 hertz over here uh, on this as well, so that just kind of rolls off anything below 108 hertz. And then the FET compressor, again, to roll off transients and just add a touch of sustain on these overheads. So let me bypass that one. And then again, soothe. So this is basically the same as the effect symbols. Bypass that and listen. let's listen to the overheads now. And I'm pretty sure I'm pulling back the level here. Yeah, I'm pulling this back quite a bit. So it's going to be louder uh, to begin with, but then I'm pulling it back about 8 dB in this plugin. All right, solo it. Okay, and now it's gonna get quite a bit quieter. But you can already hear how this, this 20 Hertz boost of about two and a half dB on this Lindell 50 series on the 500, uh, the 50B EQ sounds really damn good on these cymbals. Like listen to that difference again on the top end, pay attention to the top end. So that's with it off, this is with it on. That's so smooth, I love that. And then we have the Soothe 2 just to kind of tame any harshness. So this is with it off. And again with it on. Yeah, so it's really kind of pulling back a good bit here in, the, in between like two and 8K. And it just really kind of smooths things out really nicely. So that is the drums. So, Let's go ahead, let me make sure I didn't leave anything bypassed. I did. Limiter on my rooms. And then the snare verb. Okay, I forgot to go over the snare verb. I'll go back to that real quick. So this is using the, this comes with my Slate Digital All Access Pass, but it's the Lustrous Plates plugin. And I'm using, I started with the Iridium plate. Um, and it actually, I think it was like a, oh, right here. So you click over here and you go to drums and you go snare verb and it's going to give you the iridium plate with some stuff. I did change a few things here. I think like the reverb time damper, things like that. Uh, but this is lustrous plates. It is fantastic on a snare drum. Uh, and then I'm doing, after this, I'm doing the virtual mix rack with uh, some low, pulling back some of the low end to make sure that doesn't overload the compressor here and adding a, another bit of compression just to add a little bit more sustain to this. So what I wanted was, not a long reverb in lustrous plates, kind of something that's a little bit uh, shorter of a, of a time, but then add a compressor to extend it, which I, I just like the sound of that better versus a longer sounding reverb, which is why I added this. So let me see if you can hear this or not. Yeah, I mean, it's it's night and day there. It just kind of makes the snare just come alive and sounds big and open uh, when you add in that reverb. It's really good. All right, so full snare mix. Let's have a listen to this. So 
the way that snare smacks is just it smacks you right in the face. All right. That is the drums. Now this drum bus here goes to the instrument main. So that's going to route up to this instrument main. We'll circle back on these top level buses uh, in a little bit. So that's the drums. Uh, here's what we'll do. The bass is not going to take very long. So we'll go ahead and jump into the bass now, and then we'll take a short break and then come back and finish things up with the guitars, vocals, and then we'll go over the, the, the final buses. Um, so let's go ahead and jump into the bass now. And you can see I'm doing a little bit of automation here uh, on low control, uh, the, the, the frequency and the, the amount. And this is to, again, kind of when we get into where it's maybe the faster bass parts, uh, roll off or, or compress more the low end to avoid things getting woofy and super low and subby. So let me open up, where's the, there it is, folder. All right, so these two are the only ones I'm using here. You can ignore the other ones, they're just disabled. Um, and I'm just using the kind of the standard split bass, split bass uh, method here where this first one is gonna be like the low end. So if we play this back, this should just be the low part of the bass. And then we listen to this and it's gonna sound just the top end. And then you put them together. All right, so the low end. All right, so first of all, the bass is gin bass from Submission Audio. So this is a virtual instrument. It's a MIDI virtual instrument. Um, you can see all the settings I have here. I don't have the, the amplifier or anything like that engaged. It's literally just the DI output from gin bass. So there is what that looks like. From there, I'm then using the low pass in Pro-Q at like 215 hertz to give me the low end only. And then I've got this channel strip on, and I think I'm just pulling back some of these, like 200 hertz, I pulled it back a little bit more, adding some dynamics to give a little bit of compression, this SSL style compression. So let's go ahead. There's no reason to bypass Pro-Q3 because but like this, this is what it sounds like. It's just gonna be the DI. Adding it, it's just the end. Holy hell, you damn bot. Go away. Oh my God, it's getting worse. Let me see. I know y'all are seeing me look at my, look at the stream here. Let's see if I can boot this thing. All right, let's. Remove. Oh, that just removes the damn message. All right, well, I guess all I can do is report it. Sure. All right. Well, if y'all can report that damn thing, I don't, I don't know how to get rid of it. All right. Continuing on with the base. Uh, so yeah, so this is the, the low end of the base. So as you can see, when I add pro Q here, all you're getting is the low end uh, as I wanted on this track. So then we'll look at the SSL channel strip two, and this is with it off. And you turn it on, it doesn't do much, but just pull back some of the 200 Hertz, add a little bit of compression. So there's not a massive difference there. So that's just kind of giving me the low end beef of the base. And I didn't want to do any processing to that. I wanted it as is um, to just kind of keep the low end nice and beefy. And now, uh, we go to the top end part of the base and kind of side question. You're showing first kick, snare, toms, overhead rooms, then bass, guitars, etc. Would this be the order in which you mix them in the session too? Okay. Yuri is asking if this order that I'm going over is the order in which I would actually mix in the session. And the answer to that is yes. Um, that's just the way I like to approach a mix is always start with my, I, I mentioned this kind of at the very, very beginning, um, but I'll add a little bit of, of EQ and compression kind of on my instrument bus at the very, very top level. Just to, just to, it, it's not like super hardcore top down mixing. It's just a little bit. 
just so there's less I have to do throughout the other buses. Um, but that I'll start with that, and then I go right into my into my drums. Then I do the bass, and the reason for that is because your kick drum and your bass drum are going to always be fighting for that low end space. Um, and so having those two, like mixing those two uh, right back to back, is a great way to make sure that your low end doesn't just get blown up. Uh, and then I'll go into my guitars and then my vocals. And the reason for that is because um, I want all the instruments in place and mix the way that I like to hear it. And then I start working with the vocals. And if I need to go back and make slight tweaks here and there so that the vocals can sit on top of everything without just increasing the level, then I'll do that. Um, but it's it's much harder to like mix vocals without having, you know, the guitars in your mix right because those are they take up so much space in your mix especially heavy distorted guitars like this i mean it, it ranges from the super low stuff to the wicked high and it will just clobber everything in your mix so i like to have all the instruments done before i touch the vocals good question all right so let's uh take a look at what we're doing on the top part of the bass so this is um 200 hertz and up and let's see. So we were using Mammoth here. And the Channel Strip 2 plugin. All right, so just starting with Mammoth. So this is from Aurora DSP. Uh, and you can see I'm using this. I, I forget what the emulation is, is here. Always read your manuals, folks. By the way, always read your manuals. Let's see, is this a PDF version or is it going to open a website? What's it going to do? It's not going to do anything, apparently. Uh, so this purple, I forget what the emulation is. It's probably on their website somewhere. Um, but that's the emulation I'm using. You can see the individual settings that I've got here. I'm using their 8x10 uh, built-in IR, blending at 50%. I've got the crossover at 200 hertz, so it's like basically 200 hertz and up uh, that is being processed. And then we go into the SSL channel strip 2. And... There's, re there's really not any great way to do like a bypass here because if I bypass Mammoth, it's just going to sound like the DI, right? So now I turn it on. That's what you get. So now the channel strip two. So this is using, oh, the, the EQ is off. So the dynamics are off. So I guess I just ran it through here. Maybe I was trying to work on some EQ, but decided I didn't want it. I must have decided I didn't like it and I just disabled it versus just removing the plugin. So this is really not doing anything. So that, that's it. That's basically it for the base, individual base track processing. Now, if we go into the bus where I'm summing the bass, we have Soothe 2. All right, so. It's time for another cave of wonder. All right, another cave of wonders coming at you. So there's a few different ways that you can manage the low end in your mix between your kick and your bass. Um, I've seen many ways. I've seen you know you people using dynamic EQs and Pro-Q to, to um, have your bass, uh, have, have your, you're sending your bass into, or your, your kick drum, into your side chain, basically side chaining your kick into your bass uh, track or your bass bus. And then using a dynamic EQ to, you know, like on the low end to, to trigger just when the kick hits, right? So when the kick hits, you lower the low end on your bass. So to allow the kick drum to come through without both of them using that same low end space. Um, there's, there's that, there's also track, there's also things like track spacer and other things that kind of do it magically for you. Um, but the one that I've really found that I like is using Soothe 2. And I am using a side chain here. You can see it's activated. Um, and the side chain in Pro Tools, I forget where it is. I'm so used to Logic. Okay, right here. So we're using Bus, and you can see I'm using Kick Sum as my side chain. So I have the side, I've got the kick coming into here, and I've got the side chain active. And in fact, if we solo this, solo the bass, now you should be hearing the kick drum. Or we're not gonna hear anything. Let's see, what the hell am I not hearing anything for?
Uh, it's because it's soloed. Here we go. Watch now. So I can't just I can't just solo the bass. Uh, be actually, let me see if I can do this. Let me see if I can see if I can solo this. There we go. Okay. So when you can see when I turn on the side chain solo, all you're hearing is the kick. And you can see the gain reduction happening on the low end and soothe when the kick hits. Ready? So watch this. So there you go. You can see with the way that soothe works, it's nice because soothe will actually, and I've got, you, I've got the low pass in soothe. So it's not, nothing is even being affected at, at like 470 Hertz or so and above. It's just kind of the low end. And the way that this works is it's finding the strongest frequencies that the kick uses, which it found is at like a hundred, about 90 Hertz or so, something like that. And <clears throat> it's anytime the kick hits, it's pulling that out of the bass. So if we watch this again, I've got the side chain off. So now oh, I unmuted this, the kick. Let me, I got to solo the kick again. Here we go. So there you go. Now it's actually even lower. It's at like almost 50 or 60 Hertz. So that is the way that I have really found, <clears throat> excuse me, that I like taming the low end and the bass when the kick hits. All right. Scene sound clip. Yeah. I, Joey, I was thinking about that. I gotta, I gotta make a new scene, <laughs> something big with the, with like an actual cave or something, some silly for the cave of wonders thing. I gotta, I gotta do that. Um, okay. So that's what's happening in soothe. Now we're also using a uh, low control on the bass, And I've already mentioned how I've got this automated so that at different parts it's compressing more than others. So let's take a look. So there you go. You can see uh, during different parts where I wanted more compression to roll off more of the low end, I automated that. Uh, and then we're going into Saturn 2 with kind of the same split deal at like 291 hertz. So we're adding heavy saturation. You can see those are the settings on the top end of the bass. Warm, just a touch of warm bass on the low end. Pro Q. Uh, some looks like some dynamic stuff happening here at 99 Hertz. Maybe some stuff was getting a little bit like during it was ringing or something. Um, and then some dynamic stuff happening at 1400. Oh, you know what? I think this is actually side chained. Yes. This is side chained to the guitars. So when the guitars play, uh, this is being ducked at like 1400 Hertz. Um, and that's to allow space for that top end of the guitars to come through because these, this bass guitar, as you listen to it, there's actually a fair amount of upper end, like top end to it. As you can see right there at 1400 Hertz. So if you look right here, you can see there's quite a bit coming through. Uh, and in fact, that sounded, so you can see it quite a bit coming through there. So when the guitars play, I wanted to roll that off to allow the space for the guitars to come through. Then we have the virtual mix rack with this custom opto compressor. And this is just kind of doing a little bit of smoothing compression. So it looks like it's hovering around three dB of gain reduction. And then of course we have a limiter. Just rolling off those initial hard transients a little bit there. So if we get rid of all of these, Oh, come on. All right, give me one second. My computer just barfed on me. I found whenever that audio crap happens, I can just flip the bit rate like that in it. All right, so, so this is what it sounds like without any of this stuff on the bass. So if I add this back, that's not gonna do anything because the kick isn't playing. But if I add low control back in,
you can see how all that super low end below 90 hertz kind of gets crazy. So then we add Saturn. Really hearing it up in the upper end, this heavy saturation really kind of helps that top end bite. And then Pro Q. Not a massive difference there. We're just pulling back some of this top end above like about 9K or so. Um, and then rolling back a little bit at eight, uh, 800 Hertz. Some of the top end, 2300 and up this, with this high shelf. So we're just pulling back a little bit of the top end. And then the virtual mix rack, opto compressor. Just kind of smooths things off. And then the limiter, and that's it. So then if we put the, let me close this up, put the drums and the bass together. That's it. That's the bass and the drums. All right. We've been going for an hour and a half. Let's just take a short break and I will come back and I hope y'all stick around. Go, go take a, get a coffee or, or a nap if it's super late for you. We'll take like five minutes and I'll be right back. And then uh, we'll go through the guitars, vocals, and then the top end buses, the two bus and all that instrument buses. So I'll be back in like five minutes. I hope y'all hang around.
back. Told you it'd be a really short break. All right. I'm going to give you all a minute to catch up because I know the stream is delayed. Let's see. Oh, I forgot there are effects in this, so I guess we can run through those too. Y'all back with me? All right. Let's go ahead and open up the guitars. Good to go. All right. Excellent. So let's just go ahead and get right. Awesome. You got yourself coffee. Nice. Amazing. Co thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Y'all got some coffee, man. That's great. I should have gotten me one. I guess I got to do some talking now. <laughs> All right. So let's just go ahead and dive into the guitars now. And let me switch over so you can see it. All right. So we'll start with the leads and then we'll work our way up to the bus. I mean, there's really not anything on the bus. In fact, it's literally a tiny little dynamic EQ and a limiter. So there, we went over the bus. That's literally it. Uh, so guitar leads bus. So this has a few things in here. And let's uh, see if we can zoom in a little bit. So we've got a few things. Let's just kind of listen to what's happening here. Okay, so this is the part where things just kind of get crazy in this song. And by crazy, I mean like dark and ominous with this ridiculously heavy vocal part. Um, so if you listen to this, And when I was writing this and uh, like I had it tracked and I had it without this, like I, I didn't have this. So it was, it was, it was like this. And I was like, it's missing something. It's missing something. So started playing around and came up with this little uh, ambient thing here. Anyways. The tone from this is 100% quad cortex, uh, as is all the other guitar tones on this album and this song. So I processed all of those through my quad cortex. Um, let's see, I said, verse bridge played with fingers, no pick, QC preset, 6C. So I added uh, some notes in here. I guess I played this uh, with my fingers to avoid kind of any sort of like sharp pick attack with a pick. I wanted kind of the more muted sound. Um, and I can't actually change my preset on my quad cortex to see what <laughs> exactly those settings were, because if I do, it's going to screw with my voice because again, my, my mic is being processed through my quad cortex right now. Um, but what I'll do is at, when the stream is done, uh, I will put this information on like what the settings were in the quad cortex for anyone interested in the video description. So look for that later. Um, but really, because I've processed all of this through the quad cortex, these are all using the Bogren Digital impulse responses, both the leads. So these are using the leads and cleans pack. Uh, and then the rhythm uh, guitars are using the rhythm. I, uh, no, it's using the Cola, uh, the Bogren Digital uh, Cola IR pack, the chain, uh, rainbows and chainsaws. Um, that's on the rhythms. So here there's really not much to look at other than this channel strip. So you can see just a bit of EQ. So just boosting a little bit of the upper, upper mids, pulling back a little bit of the highs, a little bit of dynamics, uh, rolling, rolling off a little bit of the low end. And then we've got some filters here. 
just to kind of get rid of some of the super subby lows if there's anything in this guitar track and then just limit the highs to like 21 kilohertz and that's it and it's going to be the exact same thing on the other one and that's it i mean there's, there's nothing more to really show on that one so if we go to this next one let's see what this is So that, again, processed on the quad cortex. Not much to show in the EQ, but other than the kind of the same stuff, just rolling back some of the lows, rolling back some of the boxy low mids, 400 hertz, and then limiting, doing just doing some filtering to 22K and like 70 hertz. And the dynamics are off here. So that's basically it. So that's it for those let me see i think there's that's the only kind of like leady ambient guitar parts so that's that's it so let's look at the bus pro q doing nothing so i'm just gonna bypass that soothe just to kind of get rid of i'm using this guitar d spike preset which i found worked well i just rolled back some of the depth a little bit so let me actually bypass this and then i'll turn it on as it plays doing almost nothing on that part. Let's see, does it do anything more over here? Oh, I didn't. Over here. Almost nothing there as well. So it's doing almost nothing. So then we have the SSL bus comp. Let's see if this is even doing anything. almost nothing here as well so just very 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 light processing happening um one thing that i just noticed i need to circle back on the bass here real quick because this is this is kind of another cave of wonders thing but i'll spare you the silly voice this time um on the bass this is one of the things this is a trick i picked up a while back that just makes a bass sound so huge. And I actually did a whole video on this, I think. Uh, let's, let me just go back here. So this stereo width, uh, I'm sending this bass to the stereo width bus and it's up here, it's this one. And all it has in it is this uh, high pass on the mids to get rid of anything that's low end on the mids, uh, like mid side, thinking like that. So this is on the mids. We don't want the low end going into the reverb, and this is, this is going into a short reverb. This is actually called Empty Closet. It's only 210 milliseconds. And then what I, what, what, but what I have here is I have the stereo width on this pulled all the way up. And what you'll notice is when I play this back, I'm going to solo the bass. Let me make sure I'm not soloing the leads anymore. I am. So I'm going to turn this off. And then listen to the insane difference when I turn this on, how all of a sudden the bass just gets, sounds like it's wrapping around your head. You know, if you have headphones on, you're really going to hear the difference. It is insane what that does. It makes the bass just sound so open, so big, like just, it's, it's insane. So, so wide. I love it. And the reason I just thought of that is because I'm doing the same thing on my guitar leads to make them sound all big. So right here, I'm sending the stereo width. Oh, just it's way over here. So you can see I'm sending to the stereo width here as well. So let's see if we hear a difference without it. Oops, it's going to be over here. Oh, it's going to be over where the hell is it? <laughs> Over here. It's there. It's harder to hear on these leads, but especially if you're wearing some good headphones, you can hear how it just gets a little bit wider. One straight distortion in cab is. Yeah, Yuri, uh, you're mentioning how amazingly simple it is, uh, like the guitar mixing, once you get the right distortion in cab. Yeah, 100%. Um, 
there and, and again like I, i'll share all the settings for the quad cortex so you can see those and what i did um but yeah i mean there's not a whole lot that i did and even when we get to the rhythms you'll see there's really not a lot happening there uh so that's basically it on the leads let's go ahead i don't even call i shouldn't even call that leads i just call it ambient uh let's back out a little bit here and see all right so ignore all these tracks down here these are some renders that um i was playing with decided i didn't like them so really these this track here and here are what are in the final album and we'll go ahead and we'll just do like a quick sample of the rhythm guitars <laughs> <laughs> that guitar part is so ridiculous. Uh, my guitar is too far away to grab, but I, I would show you. But it's, I, I forget what the tuning is on this. It's pretty damn low. Uh, it's one of the lowest tunings you freaking bought. Stupid ass thing is back again. It's going to piss me off. Uh, so it's super low and it's this dissonant chord. And I'm literally just, it's like the third fret to the second fret to the first fret. And then second fret, first fret, second fret, first fret, second, and then back up to the third. So it's din 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 din. And it's just fast and ridiculous and it sounds so heavy. I love it. And then it goes into these holds. All right, so let's talk about what I did. Again, this is processed on the quad cortex. However, I decided after doing some experimenting and like you can see with all these down here, I needed to be able to have more flexibility in changing out the impulse response as I was mixing because when I got to vocals and with the other effects and with the lead, like the ambient guitars, I needed to have more flexibility. I couldn't just use the impulse response on the quad cortex and reamp and be done. I needed to be able to change it out. So what I did, and for anyone who received, who, who did the monthly mix and received these tracks, you heard this yourself. Um, but these are, these guitar tracks, if I mute this and just solo this one, you'll see this is just the processed guitars, like guitar preamp signal without an impulse response. There you go. I just played a quick second of it because it's loud and it just even <laughs> almost blew my own ear out. So I'm sorry if that was loud. Um, but then what I did is some post like amp processing. And so what I wanted for this guitar tone was I wanted more, I wanted more mid range. Typically I I'm cutting mid range, right? Like I want to cut some of the mids and, and boost up some of the highs and lows to get that more scooped heavy tone. But what I found with this is because it was already so damn low. I, I wanted more of that raw, dirty sounding mid range. So I pulled back some of these boxy lows, pulled back all the lows, pulled back some of the top end to allow some of that kind of dirty upper mid range to come through. So I'm going to turn on the IR so we don't blow our damn eardrums out again. And I'll show you, oops, I gave away a secret. Damn it. No, you didn't see that. All right. So I'm gonna turn on the IR and here I'm using, which one is on? This is the Bongen Ballin. This is the down-tuned Rhythm IR pack from Jens Bargren. So I lied earlier when I said it was the Cola Rainbows and Chainsaws. I think I had started with that, but right in the middle of doing this, uh, this uh, these songs, Bogren released the down-tuned pack, and I was like, yes, that's the one I need. So that's the Bongen Ballin from, uh, from Bogren Digital down-tuned pack. So I'm going to turn that on so we don't blow our eardrums out. So that's on. So this is what it sounds like with just that IR without this uh, pre-EQ happening, and then I'll turn it on so you can hear the difference. Let me put this up the middle because it's just coming out of the left side. It's a little weird. So I'm gonna bypass it again. You hear how it kind of adds a little bit of that, like this upper mid-range honk in there? Like that's the best way I can describe it is those like that, like a honky sound. 
I wanted that. I wanted that in this. I wanted it to sound honky. I wanted it to sound dirty and nasty because that's just the feeling of this whole song is dirty and, and raw and nasty. Um, so I, I liked how that EQ curve there kind of emphasized that honky mid-range a bit. And then another way that I got the honky mid-range to come through even more um, and, and kind of scooped the, uh, like e uh, EQ'd this, this DI before it hit the impulse response, or not DI, hit this, uh, EQ this amp signal before it hit the impulse response, was the Fleisch EQ in Cola's, uh, what is this thing called? The, the Grindstein. So do you see everything down here is off? They're all, they're all off. So I right click, it turns it on, right click, it turns it off. So the only thing on is, is the EQ section. But this Fleisch EQ is so damn good. Uh, and I didn't need to do much. So you can see Dozer is down to nothing. Cleansing is 18%. So the way you have to think about these EQs is if you turn it up, some of these turn frequencies down, others turn frequencies up. So like cleansing, as you turn this up, it's actually turning down some of the lower mids, hence cleansing. Um, scooping, you turn this up, it turns down some of the mids again. So here I've, I've got 18% on cleansing, 19% on scoop. The one I really liked was the chainsaw, which is up 25%. And then blade adds this disgusting top end, which is so fantastic, by the way. Uh, and that's at 18%. So let me bypass this, or it is, let's see, it is bypass. All right, let me play this back and I'll turn it on. <laughs> Now let me, let me come over to here to this other guitar part, which may be easier to hear. <clears throat> yeah, I just, I loved the, the chainsaw in the blade on this, especially the chainsaw. It just kind of gives it that almost HM2E kind of vibe, right? So it adds a little bit of that to the top end. And then the last thing was the channel strip plug in. I have the EQ on, but I'm not seeing. Okay. So I just pulled back a little bit of the low end. I must've found it just got a little bit too much. So I've used the SSL style EQ. We've got a little bit of the filtering happening at 33 Hertz. I probably could have brought that up to uh, 21, almost 22 kilohertz on the filters. So let me pull this back over. I think I had it at panned 90%, something like that. Sure. 92. Uh, so now if we listen to these again. Yeah. I mean, right. It's, it's so good. It's so brutal. Uh, I'm just seeing your, your comment, uh, bebop samurai. I love that name by the way. All right. So those are the guitar tracks. Now I did forget to turn off the actual bus processing. So you're hearing a little bit of that too, but it's not much. Um, you can see just a tiny bit of EQ. Uh, we have some dynamic bands down here on the low end, just in case things get a little bit woofy, like during open chugs. Uh, this kind of helps tame those. A couple ringing frequencies I pulled back, and then just some filtering. Then we go into Saturn. Let's start with the lows. I'm not doing much here, just a little bit of warm tape. And then the mids, again, I'm boosting up these mids uh, between 300 and about 1100 hertz, boosting up with warm tape and adding just a touch to the to the top end with warm tape as well. So I really just wanted to push some mids in this, get those honky mids, just to kind of dirty things up a bit. Uh, and then a limiter. So let's go ahead and turn these on one at a time and see what we hear. Not a massive difference there. I mean, I can hear a little bit, a little tiny bit of the kind of the fizziness at the very, very top end drop off when we engage this. Now Saturn. That really pushes those mids there, which sounds really nice. And then of course the limiter. And we're not hitting it there. So that's the rhythm guitar tone. That's literally it. Uh, that's how I processed it. And again, I will put the information on what I used in the quad cortex, uh, in the video description. I believe it was one of like the 5153 amp sims, but
but I'll, I, again, I will double check on that and I'll put the info in the video description after the live stream. So that's guitars. Uh, oh, well, one, one last thing. The gu individual guitar buses, leads, and rhythms go out to the top end guitar bus, which I've already showed. It's just e uh, Pro Q with just a tiny little low end dynamic band and then a, a, another limiter. So from there, we're just gonna keep going down and get into the effects. Some interesting stuff happening here. And so these are just kind of some reverse symbols and bass drops, I believe is all this was. Uh, see, what exactly in the mids do you usually add saturation with the Saturn for the guitars? Where exactly? Oh, uh, I can pull it back up. Um, I will usually look at the actual like curve. So if I play this back, you can see the, the curve of the guitars coming through. Oops, there they were. And you can actually just visually see kind of where things really duck off. And because I know I wanted more mid range, I just kind of found the area that was that was lowest, which was right there in between like 300 and 1100 hertz, and just kind of started playing with with boosting some saturation there. You can see I boosted it up 69%, but it's mixed in at only 13%. So it's boosting that saturation hard, but it's mixed in low, but it adds just enough uh, to kind of help those those mids that were kind of low in in this in this area start coming through a little bit more. So let's look at the effects. So starting here, we have a bus comp, and this is just to kind of tame things in case things in these individual tracks get crazy, but it's not doing a whole lot. Um, and there's literally nothing at all, no plugins whatsoever on either of these. So I just liked them as they are, and I just set the levels. How I wanted it, and just that's it. So this is a symbol rise and a bass drop, I think. That's it. And then over here is a few other symbol rises. Let's see. Let's see what part that was. Yeah. So it just kind of helps lift things in the when it drops. Yep. The mid scooped area. That's it. Uh, and then that's basically it. That just repeats over again, some other rises and bass drops. That's it. So I'm not, I'm done with the effects. And I should also mention that the guitars go out to the instrument main bus as do, as does the bass and the drums. So, so far the drums, bass, and the guitars go to my instrument main bus. Now the effects, but the effects go to that this effects track as well as the synth goes to effects main. So this synth here, we'll look at this. And this is just all kind of like ambient layering. Um, again, as I was listening to this song back, I just felt like there were things missing and I wanted it to sound bigger. I, I wanted that, that kind of those empty spaces to be filled with something. Um, and in a lot of times it was even just more a feel thing. Like I wanted, I wanted the feel to come across in a different way. Maybe you couldn't even necessarily hear it so much, as it just changed up the feel of things. And really a prime example of that is, I'm pretty sure this very first thing that comes in here, um, you, you kind of hear it at the very beginning of the song, it fades in, but then when everything comes in, you don't really hear it unless you're listening very, very specifically for it. But if I mute it, you probably would, would hear the difference or even feel the difference. Um, so that's this one. And you, you see it's just all like spooky and dark and ominous, right? Like that's kind of the whole kind of feeling of the song. Um, but it's mixed in really low. So it's, it, again, it's not meant to be something that's, that's tr like strong and prominent. This is coming from Opus. Uh, let's see if I remember what the hell Opus is. Uh, this comes from, this is a subscription to something with all kinds of instruments. Um, I'm trying to remember what the hell this was from. And this thing was like crazy powerful too. I will have to look this up and figure out what, again, it's been, it's been like six months since I've been in this session and I haven't used this instrument since, and I forgot where the hell I got this thing, but I'll put the information in the description below, but this plugin is called Opus, uh, and you can install all sorts of different, I mean, the, the company that makes this has tons and tons of different orchestras and choirs and different sounds 
Uh, and so I was messing with this Twisted Textures, which is where I got all these crazy sounds from. So this is the Disturbed Frantic uh, texture here. And so let's take a look at what I did. So you can see there's just some heavy processing here. There's a lot of top end I didn't want. Getting rid of some low end. Soothe, obviously, just to kind of tame any harshness on the top end. And then the channel strip with some filters, just a touch of EQ and a little bit of dynamics. So let's see what it sounds like without these. that was getting loud with a lot of top end. So I'm obviously pulling back the, le the level quite a bit in one of these plugins, probably a channel strip, but you can hear how there was a lot of top end in this. And that must be what was happening here. So let me engage this plugin, uh, Pro Q3 and see what was happening. Yeah, you can already see like I'm I'm purposely killing a lot of this top end because there was just a ton of super high end in this. Uh, and then Soothe is going to help smooth things out. Run it again. This is bypassed. Yeah, you can see right there how that really kind of tames things. All right, and then the last thing is this channel strip. So if we look here, I must, yeah, oh yeah. You can see I'm pulling back the output almost 20 dB. So this is where all the, out, the, the level is being pulled back. And adding a bit of dynamics. Do you know when the Bogren contest winners will be announced? I do know when the Bogren uh, contest winners will be announced, and it will be very soon. Um, probably as early as tomorrow. Uh, I've already recorded all of that, so I know who the winners are. Uh, and it's been sent over to them, so they are getting ready to publish it. I would expect it to probably be launching tomorrow. So that was for the question for Maddie G I see in the comments. Uh, and so that is the channel strip. So that's basically how I process that one. Um, and Oh, Vinny says today launching it. Okay. So it's not tomorrow. It's today. Oh, today is <laughs> today is Friday. My, my week is totally screwed up. So it's launched. You'll find out who the winners are today. So ignore what I said. I found that the synths and post-production tracks were the only ones that needed to be turned down. Everything else only required a little gain staging. Yeah, Geotish, I, I totally agree. Um, and as you'll see, a lot of these I've turned down a ton and I've also pulled back a lot of the top end. Um, and because we're now actually already over the two hour mark, which I said was gonna be <laughs> kind of the length of the video and we haven't done vocals or the top end, I'm gonna quickly run through uh, the settings I use on these other ones, which is gonna be very similar. Um, so again, these are all Opus, except for the ones that are contact, and I'll show that. So we're just doing some filtering on that one. A little bit of saturation, just to kind of smooth things out with some warm tape. And then the channel strip, which is probably going to be pulling back. I know it's boosting the level here, so this one must have been just low coming out of Opus. So let's see what this one is. It's called, yeah, it's called violin. I, I think this was just kind of like an orchestra with just making some random noises and squeaks and stuff. And this was just to kind of add kind of that, that ambient vibe. Uh, so that's that one. And we've got a drone. Let's see what's, where's this one right here. Just a low drone. This is coming out of contact. This is the ethereal earth uh, from the contact play series. And let's just kind of quickly look at what we're doing. So we're doing some high pass on the EQ, some saturation. So we're getting the low end with old tape. 
and then the top end part with broken tube. So this is just gonna dirty it up a bit. That's without it, and that's with it. So it just adds a little bit of kind of sizzle onto the top end. Very, very subtle though. Pulling back the level 10 dB, adding some dynamics, pulling back the top end, and pulling back a little bit of the 500 Hertz. So that's basically what I'm doing on the drone. Synth one, this is Anna two. This is the Slate Digital Synth. Uh, and I'm using Interstellar Ghost as the preset. And I don't think I changed anything. So let's just see what this one sounds like. Okay, so that's that one. Uh, and then you can see the EQ I'm doing here, not much, just pulling back a little bit of around 500 Hertz, doing some filtering, 60 Hertz, pulling back some of the top end, adding a little bit of the SSL compression, pulling it back the input by 10, 10 dB and the output by 10 dB. And I do have a synth verb here, which is the Valhalla Supermassive. And before this, before anything goes into Val Supermassive, uh, you can see I've got these filters applied at 118 Hertz and 4,500 kilohertz because um, I don't want any of the super highs or super lows going into the reverb. But I'm using the Dirty Snare preset. You can see all the settings I have here. I've got the mix all the way up. And this is just to add some additional kind of ambience and, and, and sustain and all of that to some of these. So you can see where I've got this synth verb on some of these. That's where it's being applied. Whereas I noticed this one, I've, I must have bypassed it because it already has enough reverb on it. Uh, and then let's keep going down. Let's what is this one? Let's see this one here. What is this? This one's called Fear, and this is coming from Opus. Twisted textures. Okay. And then so Pro Q3, you can see we're just doing some filtering here. Soothe because this got real harsh in the up in the top end here. Just soothe it. You can really hear how some of those, I don't know what the sound is, but it's really kind of piercing the sound. So soothe really helps with that. Uh let's see some EQ, not a lot happening, some filters and some some dynamics. That's basically it on that one. And then I think this is the last one. Let's see what this sounds like. This is another Anna 2. Slate Digital. Let's see, this is the Driven FM preset. Okay. So we're not doing much here, just pulling off a little bit of the very, very top end on that EQ. And then SSL channel stripped again, just doing some filtering, pulling back a little bit more of the top end, pulling back a touch of the, the mid range and some compression. So that's basically it. Let's see what else we've got down here. Some explosions. Yeah. So these are going to come from Anna too as well. It has these really nice uh, explosion sound effects. So this is the noised long tube is what it's called. So soloing it. just kind of got this nice transient smack and just this long decay on it uh let's see pulling back some of the low end drum strip okay so this is just to get transient shaper to really even bring out some more of the transient add some low frequency high frequency uh saturation and the listen mic compressor so let's see the difference without it and then with it yeah so it really kind of helps that smack come through. And then the channel strip. And I'm not doing anything on the EQ, just some filters and some dynamics. And let's keep trucking. All right, so there's another explosion over here. Let's see what this one sounds like. Okay, this one sounds more like a traditional explosion, kind of a boom. Let's see what the preset is in Anna 2 here. This is Thunder Bong. Let's see how we processed it. 
pulled back some of the top end and the low end. Red comp. So I'm using the Focusrite 3 red compressor. Really crushing it. No, no. Let's see. Okay, so about 8 dB of gain reduction or so. Let's see what it sounds like without that. And with it. So it really kind of tamed that initial transient, that initial boom, so that some of that sustain can ring out without it being so long as well. And then we have the channel strip again, S, uh, the SSL channel strip too. And it looks like we're doing, what are we doing? No EQ, no filtering, just some dynamics. And then what was this one here? Is this just an empty track? So that one I must not have done anything with. Uh, and then the very last one in effects is this ambience here again from Anna 2. And this one is really low. Very, very low. Let's see. So just pulling off some of the low end. Channel strip two. Just a touch of EQ, pulling back some low end, pulling back some top end. Using some of these filters to get rid of the top end and low end. No dynamics, just pulling back the input and the output to level things off where I wanted it. This is all going into the synth verb. So that's basically it for the effects. So I'm gonna I'm gonna just continue on to the vocals. If you have any, oh sorry, I didn't do the bus. Let's run through the bus real quick. So a dynamic band at like 1300 hertz. There must have been something really strong there, and then just getting getting rid of anything left over in the lows that comes through. The Magnum. This is from Plugin Alliance. This is the Magnum K uh, compressor, which is actually nice. It has this built-in air band, their famous air band, which goes all the way up to 40 kilohertz. Uh, but it has this very, very, very long slope to it. So even at 40 kilohertz, it still brings everything up kind of all the way down to like 10 hertz. Uh, so it looks like I'm using some of that air band here at 30, 30 kilohertz boosted up 6 dB. Let's see if there's any compression happening on this. Yeah, you can see the, the, the gain reduction down here. Uh, and it looks like it was peaking at around negative five dB. So we're doing a little bit of compression on this as well as adding some air band. So without it. And with it. Subtle stuff, not a massive difference. Just kind of adds a little bit of top end clarity and air to it. Uh, and then a little bit of compression. And then exciter from Audio Assault. So this is kind of their version of saturation, uh, of, sorry, Saturn, Fab, Fab Filter Saturn. It's a multi-band saturator. And I'm just doing some medium, uh, medium distortion curve, it looks like, with exciter A, tube, tube, and tube. And so the way this works is this bass band affects everything uh, 121 hertz and below. The low mids is 121 to 735 hertz. Highs is 4.4K back down to 735. And then treble is basically everything from 4.4 up. And so I, you can see that's that's what I've done here. Let me just bypass it and see the difference. This is bypassed. Ah, that. Again. One second. Gotta love Pro Tools. All right, we should be good now. All right, so this is bypassed. All right, and now with it. Yeah, I really like the way, like this Exciter A, uh, and especially like this low mids kind of, it really kind of helped bring those out. Um, and, and it just kind of bring some of that low end ambience up. So that's the sense. So I'm gonna keep trucking so this doesn't turn into a four hour video. And we're gonna look at vocals. I'm gonna take a drink, drink of water real quick. Y'all let me know if you have any questions about anything so far. I see our bot won't leave us alone. Stupid thing. All right, 
I'm going to get into the vocals. I know this is a delay, so if y'all ask a question and I don't see it until a bit after you've asked it, I'll, I'll, I will circle back. Okay. So vocals. Uh, I have a number of things happening on the bus, but we'll circle back to that. We'll come back to that after we look at the individual tracks. So the very first thing I want to point out is I had to automate the hell out of all kinds of stuff on the vocals, which as you'll see, as I scroll over, you can just see all the individual automation. This is just the vocal verb two that you're seeing. There's also things like, let's see if I can find them here. All these that are yellow are what's automated. So volume, uh, vocal distortion, bus, vocal verb two, vocal vocal delay. So all kinds of effects buses. Core Studios, welcome. No worries on being late, man. The, the video is being recorded, so all of this will be up on my channel once the stream ends. So no worries on being late. Just glad you dropped in. Um, we're going over vocals now. We just started. Uh, but I was just mentioning we're, I'm doing a lot of automation on my sends uh, and even volume. So at certain places, I need to up the volume or lower the volume. Uh, and then at certain times, I wanted the, the vocal delay uh, and reverb to really ring out long. So I faded that up near the end of vocal phrases. And then there were certain parts where I wanted the distortion to sound heavier on the vocals and less in, in other parts. So I automated that up and down. So there was a lot of automation. Uh, but let's kind of take a look at how I process these. And as you can see, looking at these vocal tracks, which go from here to here, there's literally only one plugin on the tracks themselves. And that is my most trusted, or I should say my trusty API channel strip from Plugin Alliance, the Lindell 50 series. And looking at what I did, this is basically going to be the exact same across all of these tracks. So I'm not going to pull it up on every single individual track because it's literally the same thing. Uh, pulling back a little bit of the mid range at 500 Hertz, just an absolute smidge pulled back at 100 Hertz. Um, boosting up a touch at 20 K to add some air on those vocals. And then using this fantastic fat compressor to smooth off the vocals. And the way this really works is this ceiling knob down here. The higher you turn this up, the more compression you get. So I've got it at like eight. So it's doing a fair amount. So it's going to do max of, of eight dB of gain reduction. Uh, but that's, that's basically it that's happening on the individual tracks. So what's so special with the API plugin? Uh, I see a Chris, uh, so we got a Chris, Christopher, Chris, uh, I'm not sure. Is, is it Christoph, Christoph Lambert? I want to make sure I say your name right. Uh, but we have a question. Okay, I answered. <laughs> see, you got to love the delay. So you asked the question. I didn't see it until it kind of has already been answered. Um, but I, I, I love just overall the sound of this plugin and its versatility. Um, so what that what, by versatility, I mean, you get three different EQ modules here. You have a 50A, 50A, there we go, 50A, 50B and 60 series. And then you have two different compressors. You have a VCA and a FET style compressor. All in one, you have the preamp uh, where you can even push the input gain and get some additional saturation just through the preamp. You have this really great noise gate and then your, your level control. So it is just really well-rounded and it works so good and it sounds great. So that's why I, I use it a lot. Um, so that's what's happening on the individual tracks. Like that, that's it on the individual tracks other than the sends. So some of the, you can see the vocals distortion and vocal verb two here. This one's going to vocal distortion. We have vocal distortion, vocal delay, vocal distortion, vocal delay. Uh, let's see, it's basically it. Voc and then there's just a mix of vocal distortion and vocal verb or vocal delay. So that's literally it for the individual tracks. So if we move up to the, to those auxes, the buses that I'm sending these individual tracks to, we have four of them. There's vocal verb, vocal verb two, 
Vokes distortion and vocal delay. So looking at the first one, we have some EQ just to make sure we're getting rid of the lows and the high end before it goes into the reverb. We don't want those in the reverb. And then here we're just using the, the CLA A plate. Basically straight up just this CLA AL2 Vokes verb. Looks like I did change some stuff, which is probably the EQ. Uh, but that's just the Slate Digital Verb Suite Classics reverb on ver a vocal verb one. Vocal verb two, which is where it, which is what's giving me the long, like the very long decay reverb, which uh, again, here we have the pre-EQ before it goes into the reverb because we don't want those subby lows or super highs. But this is the fantastic Valhalla Super Massive, which is free. If you don't own this, go download it immediately after this live stream because it is so versatile. It does so many different sounds and it sounds so damn good and it's free. But this is what's giving me that long decay and I'm using a hold a chord preset and I've adjusted some, some things to my liking here. Uh, and so that's giving me that long decay. And I'll give you some samples of that in just a minute. Vocals distortion. This is just to kind of dirty things up a bit. We're getting rid of the low end before it goes into Saturn. And this is just full on broken tube, almost all the way up here, mix at 92%, drive at 93%. Just really dirtying it up, but just blending it when in the send, not super hot. Um, and then the vocal delay, again, just some pre-EQ before we hit the repeater. And I'm pretty sure I got this. This comes with my Slate Digital All Access Pass. I'm pretty sure that's where this comes from. Um, so this is just kind of a vintage style delay and you can see we're using the preset wide vocal delay too. Um, yeah, I can't believe it's free, honestly. it's It blows my mind that it's free, but it's great marketing for them because they have really great plugins overall. Um, so giving something free gets their name out there. People become aware of them. They probably go buy other plugins, I guess. Um, but let's go ahead and do some audio samples here so you can hear kind of what's happening in these vocals uh, and with some of these automations. So like right here, for example, we've got some stuff where I'm boosting up the level of the vocal verb two, which is with vo uh, Valhalla Supermassive. So this is gonna be a long delay. So let's have a listen to what this sounds like where this automates up. So let's solo this one and solo this one. I am a top of it all. You hear that? That that vol the the super massive, the how when it when I automate this up, it just and it and it fades out like that. Um I love that. Uh so panning, we can talk about panning. I see the question, distortion, vocals, center, or wide. Uh, I will talk about panning. Let's, let's take a look at the panning here once we get through with some of the audio samples on the, the, on the, on the sends. Um, so this one here, it looks like I've actually brought up the level on, on Supermassive throughout the whole thing. Let's see what it sounds like. Those vocals are nuts. The dude who, who tracked this for me, and I see our lovely bot is back. Report that thing, please. Um, uh, the dude who tracked this, his name is Billy Douglas. Uh, he lives in the UK somewhere, I believe. Um, but I, I hired him for these because I've, I've heard of his, some, of, some of his other stuff on, on a Facebook group. Loved his vocals, and he just absolutely destroyed these. It's so sick. But what I wanted here was that just the kind of the ambience of that Valhalla super massive. So I just left it on throughout this whole part. Let's see if we can find some other examples of this ringing out here. It looks like there's one here. Let's see what this one sounds like. Yeah. So you can hear how that rings off. Um, and you can also hear the vocals distortion. So like an example of what the distortion sounds like. So I'm going to turn off this vocal distortion send, and this is what it sounds like without it. And then with the vocal distortion send. I mean, you can hear it just really dirties things up, which again was kind of the theme of this whole song, just dirty and raw and gross. Um, all right, so that's basically an example of how I use those sends. So now we can talk about the panning. So let's just kind of start right at the beginning. And I'm gonna just solo the vocals. So we can just listen in to the vocals. 
This is what it's like Looking into a broken mirror The person on the other side So, so looking at panning These dubs up here These ones I've got panned Like 38 left, 38 right So if we solo just these two Actually that one's solo Okay This is what it's like And you can hear they are they're 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 panned a little bit wide just to kind of give a, a wide sound to that part. Um, and yes, these do have distortion on them. In fact, I think every single thing, every single vocal track has some level of the distortion on it. So there's nothing in here that's just completely clean. Uh, some have stronger distortion than than others, though. Like for example, let me look at this first one. The main vocal, uh, it's at like twenty negative twenty three percent on the send. But if we look at this one, this one's up to 18%. So you can see that some of those ones that are, the dubs have more distortion than the mains. And then uh, the, the main vocals I left right up the middle. There's no panning on those. Both of them that, sit, that were main, um, and there's two mains, those are right up the middle. And then this one here is 100%. So I, I panned these main vokes which are uh it does these are labeled main but they're meant to be like doubled mains and that's because we still have the primary mains here like these these ones here uh this one this one these are my, my cursor is being wicked slow so like this one and this one are our primary mains but when we got to this part where it's labeled as the chorus i wanted things to just go wide sound big and huge and wide. Um, and that's where these one, these two here go super wide. Broken, fragile mind. Oh, and, and right there you can hear, there's the repeater delay. So you can see we've got the vocal delay in here going at 100%, so this just kind of helps that, that tail end kind of uh, on the beat kind of fade off. So that was a perfect example. Let's hear that again. Yep. So that's a perfect example of the delay. And those were panned a hundred percent. So they are far left, far right. And then those are uh, layered with the main vocals. So if we just solo the just solo the vocals themselves, here what you here's what you get all together. Yep. So there, there you go. That's where I, in the chorus I wanted things to go big and wide. Um, I think that's basically it for as far as the individual tracks and the sends and processing. Um, looking at the bus, this has quite a bit happening here. So starting with Pro Q3, we're just doing a high pass. We don't need any of that low stuff on our vocals. We're using the Slate EOS. Uh, Eosis E2 DSer. So this is how I'm DSing the vocals. To only keep where the audio signal is. Um, yeah. So Christoph, the you're saying I cleaned up the vo the vocal tracks to just keep where the vocals are and get got rid of the other like the empty space. Yes, I uh, I, I will always trim off any empty space. Um, and in fact, every DAW has key commands to help you do that. I forget what it is uh, in Pro Tools. Um, and I'm trying to remember what it is in Logic. Geothis, if, if you're here, you're the key command master. Uh, I believe it's something like Control-Z or con Command-Z or Command-X or something like that when you select a track. And it brings up a window. And you can select the, the DB, like the level that you want it to cut off. So if anything below that level, it'll cut off. And you can adjust it. And it gives you the visual of what it's gonna cut off. And you just hit okay, and it just gets rid of all that empty space. Um, but yeah, that's always something I'll do. And so again, here's the, this is the DSer uh, that I'm using, you can see the settings. And then we have Saturn on the vocals. So we have the low end here, which is warm tube, not doing a ton, 41% on the, on the saturation, 31% blended. Adding a little bit more warm tube on the top end. 
And then the Maggie Q, this is kind of like, this is, if I'm going to mix vocals, this is going to go on my bus, guaranteed. Uh, because, first of all, this air band is an absolute must. You can see I've got it on the 40 kilohertz, and I've got it boosted up 7.5 uh, dB. And this is just because, again, it has that very long taper, and it just lifts everything up beautifully. Uh, and I'm boosting at 2.5, pulling back about 3 dB at 650, pulling back 160, about a half a dB, pulling back 40 hertz, and then the sub stuff, pulling that down. Just a fantastic EQ on vocals. And again, for anyone who's unaware, this is uh, the Mag EQ4 from Plugin Alliance. And then the only Waves plugin I have to date, because I don't like the update program that they have, but um, this is this is a plugin I felt like I needed, so I, I went ahead and got it. Um, it's called Vocal Rider, and it's a sort it's it's a sort of a um, yeah, okay. So again, the, the delay, I, I'm just seeing your, your comment now, Geothis, but uh, strip silence is control X. So I was close. Thank you. Um, so again, vocal rider, this is sort of like a, a compressor. Um, you can think of this like in the old, old like back in the 60s, 70s or whatever, um, before they had really great compressor hardware, what they there was actual engineers sitting on a desk where, where, where certain parts they wanted to be up or, or low you'd have your fingers on those faders and just as the band was playing and tracking, you'd be moving faders up or pulling them back as the dynamics change. This sort of mimics that. Um, and you can use either a slow mode or a fast mode. You can think of that as like a slow attack or fast attack. Um, and same thing with a release. Uh, and then you set your thresholds and then set a, a level up here, like where you want the, 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 this thing to kind of react at. And you'll see that as I start playing it back, you'll see the level start fading in um, for the audio. And then this will increase or pull back dependent on the audio signal. So again, it's similar to like an expander and a compressor in one. Um, but the way that they, they, in their manual, again, always read the manuals. Uh, it says to put this in front of your vocal compressor, which is what I did. And my vocal compressor of choice is the purple, uh, this is the, what is this thing called? The purple audio uh, from Plugin Alliance. And this is a, gosh, I even forget, it's a FET style compressor, I think, or an opto compressor. Um, but it has a super, super fast attack and release time, which is what I wanted uh, to really just kind of tame the vocals and just crush them and just keep them all consistent. Uh, and then, that's just, that's it. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna bypass all these. And oh, and the last thing is the vocals. I have the all of the vocals going into the stereo width bus, which I went mentioned earlier, just to kind of help expand those a little bit. Uh, yes, yes, thank you. It's 1176 style compressor. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Totally drawing a blank on that. It is an 1176 style. Uh, and then. I have the bus routed into the vocal verb one, which is this one with the slate digital. Um, so this bus routes into here. So none of the individual tracks route into this. I just found I wanted it evenly on everything. So I just routed the bus into this. Then the, this doesn't route into uh, the vocals bus. It routes all the way up to vocal main, which we will get to in just a minute. Uh, and so those are the sends happening. So here's what the vocals sound like without any of the processing on the bus. All right, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play it back and I'm just gonna slowly start turning things on so you can hear what each thing does. So there you go. You can hear it's it's a little bit more leveled off now. There's not as much like dipping and, and spiking in the vocals. You get a little bit more air and top end from the from Saturn and especially the Mag EQ. And then the DSer is taming some of that that high end sizzle. Um, you know, the S, S's in the vocals. Now, what I want to do is just kind of show you what's happening with this Waves vocal rider as this is playing back. Broken, 
time hope to find my place inside my so you can see it's i mean it's pretty cool what it does is given the level that i've set at the top and the thresholds that i've set for how much it can increase and how much it can decrease it's just keeping the level kind of right there consistent whether it needs to increase the level or decrease it just to kind of smooth things off uh, before it goes into the hardcore compression of this purple audio uh, and this is just really fast attack really fast re release let's see how much gain reduction we're getting here looks like it maybe peaked around negative 3 db so not a ton that's happening here because we've already got the vocal rider in front of it and the FET compressor from the API channel strips on all of the individual tracks as well. So that is the vocals. Let me see if there are any questions. Yes, it does. It's, it, it's a fantastic compressor. I love it on the vocals. And in fact, it actually works really well on drums too. I didn't do it in this mix, but you can definitely use that on drums as well. All right, so that's all of the individual tracks, all of the individual buses. The last thing is the, the main bus, instrument bus, effects, vocals, and that's it. That's, that's it. So I'm going to take a sip of water, see if there's any questions. Yeah. Yeah, it is kind of like a mix between, uh, re regarding the, the vocal rider, it is kind of uh, between a mix between a leveler and a compressor kind of thing. It's nice. Dave M. Project in the house. Dude, what is up, man? Congrats on your recent Bugger Digital win. I, I have to tell you, dude, I literally got chills when I watched that entry. Literally like tinglys all over. I was just freaking floored the vocal you're you have an incredible voice my friend you need to put out an album i would buy it in a heartbeat fantastic musician all right um so we're gonna now do the last part of this and then we'll wrap this thing up um and this is the the t very top level buses so we'll start with the instrument bus then do the effects the vocal and then the the very top level main bus all right so the way this works is these three buses here, instrument main, effects main, vocal main, they all, as you can see over here on the right, right here, they all route out to the main bus, which is this one here. So we have drums, bass, guitar, and that's it. Drums, bass, and guitar going into instrument main. Uh, the synths and the effects tracks going into effects main. And then of course, the vo all the vocals go into effect, uh, vocals main. Excuse me. And then all three of these go into main. Um, no, no, no. You rock, Dave M. Project. You rock. All right. So looking at instrument main, the very first thing I have here is some EQ. And we are doing what? We're doing at 14.4 kilohertz or 14.5, whatever it was. We're doing a high shelf and we're boosting it 4 dB, and this is in stereo mode, I should add. So this is the same thing happening on the left and the right channel. Uh, and then we have 4.8 kilohertz at 0.8 on the curve, boosted about 1 dB, it's 0.9 on the up on the kind of the, top, the high EQ here. Nothing happening on the mids, this one is turned off. On the low EQ, we're pulling back to 90 hertz, 1.3 on this bell curve. Uh, and then a, about a half a dB, 0.4. And then we're boosting some lows, starting at 64 hertz with a bell of one, the bell curve of uh, one, 1 1.0. And we're boosting up almost one dB, 0 0.9. Not doing any filtering, it doesn't look like. Uh, channels are just the default one and two. Pulling back the output gain a little bit because we're boosting a, quite a bit of lows in the top end here. So we got to pull back that to make up for it. Proper gain staging. Uh, and then we're going into Slate Digital Fresh Air to add just a little bit of the mid air and the top shelf air. Um, and then we have the Shadow Hills Mastering Compressor Class A, which is a wonderful, fantastic compressor. So let's do this. Let me solo. Let me see. Can I solo this damn thing? Oops. Do I still have something solo? I do. 
know soloing bosses in Pro Tools is always weird. Stupid. Like, why, why does that not work? <laughs> I've always had issues with this. It's so much easier to do than logic. I hate it. All right, let me see. Nope, okay. So I have to do it the old-fashioned way. Let me just solo my drums, bass, and guitar, because that's the only thing going into this anyway. All right. Okay, so now I'm going to bypass all of these in the instrument main. And I'll turn them on one at a time, and I'll turn them on it so you can see what one I'm doing. So this is the Amec EQ. Let me get to a better part here where you can hear it. Uh, it's like over here. That beautiful, beautiful high end on this EQ. I love that. You can really hear it in the cymbals. Here's a, here it is bypassed. Of course, adds a little bit of beef in the low end here with that boost. Fantastic EQ. All right, and then we have the uh, Slate Digital Fresh Air. Again, adding nice, beautiful top end air to this, to these instrument, uh, instrument bus without it sounding harsh. It sounds so smooth, beautiful. And then the last thing to control those strong transients and, and hits from the snare that are purposely mixed louder so that it ducks the compressor here on this instrument bus, we have the Shadow Hills Mastering Compressor Class A. So let's have a listen to this. And, and, and pay attention to the, the, the snare drum, especially when I, when I engage this. You can see how that just kind of reins everything in, but it also makes that snit when the snare pops like that and it ducks the snare, it kind of, everything else kind of just drops a little bit. Uh, it sounds really good. So you can see the settings I've got here. Um, I'm not going to read them all because there's a ton, but if you have the if you have this, you can you can just kind of take a look at how I'm mixing this. Again, please don't ever mix by taking screenshots and just matching settings. It's not how we mix. You can see what I'm doing with the mix that I've dialed in. Um, and use that as like a reference, potentially a starting point, but just know you're never going to be able to just copy settings and have it work for your own stuff. Uh, so that's the instrument main. Let me unsolo these. Now it's the effects main. And you know what? It's probably an easier way I can do this. I can probably just mute the other ones I don't want. Okay. So effects main, we're doing... Similar EQ, just adding some top end air, it looks like. Same thing, fresh air. And on this one, we're doing the, the BX uh, Townhouse Bus Compressor, again, from Plugin Alliance. So let's go ahead and bypass these and just have a listen to what happens when we enable them. Oh, you're hearing bass because of the stereo width. I need to mute that one. Back. Let me see. I think there's more over here. It's not a. It's not a whole lot that's being really done on this. It's just kind of some final compression, just to make sure nothing gets too too out of control, and adding some air. That's basically it. So vocals. Um, this vocal main is is honestly kind of unnecessary. Um, you wouldn't necessarily need to do this. I don't even remember why I did this. Um, but basically, the 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 main vocal bus routes up into this time. Oh, you know what? I do remember why I did this. It's because at the time I had a subgroup. I was I was doing um, subgrouping out through uh, this Cranborn Audio 500 series. Uh, the, it's the 500 R8 and it has a, um, gosh, I forget what the hell it's even called now. A, uh, a mixer in it. So where you can, you can route out 
uh, because this is a it has use USB interface in it, so I can route out individual digital tracks to subgroups in the in the hardware in the analog hardware. Uh, analog summing, Jesus, that's what it is. <laughs> it has a summing mixer in it, uh, so where I can route out and route like the the instruments, the effects, and the vocals to individual analog subgroups in this uh, summing mixer. Have it have them analog analog summed instead of digitally summed, analog summed into one mixing channel that then comes back into the DAW. Um, I since have undid that because I've changed a bunch of stuff in this uh, in this rack, so I can't really do that right now. Um, but that's what I did at the time I mixed this, is I had the instruments going out to uh, to an analog channel, effects going out to a separate analog channel, and effects voc main going out to another analog channel, anal summing them in the analog space and sending them back into main where they all came back in together after they had been summed in the analog mixer. So that's why this exists. <clears throat> but here, the only thing I have is just a tiny bit of this BX town townhouse bus compressor. Let's see if it's even doing anything. About one dB of gain reduction, not much. So that's all that's being done on the vocals. So then the very last thing in this entire mix are three plugins. Virtual tape machine from Slate Digital. And I'm gonna bypass that. SPL Iron from Plugin Alliance. I'm gonna bypass that. And then Ozone Pro from Isotope, which is gonna take forever to open. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna bypass that one. So now here's what everything sounds like without the main bus, like the two bus, as some people call it, processing on the entire mix. I guess I need to end it. So now let's go ahead and engage this, which should roll off just a very, very tiny touch of top end while also adding low end uh, because of the way this tape saturation works. Yeah, I can really hear it how, especially in the kick drum, it just becomes a little bit more beefy. And then the next thing is the SPL iron. And this is, the most transparent and smooth sounding compressor that exists as far as I've found, um, which is why I use it on the two bus here because I'd, I've already done the punchy compression, the SSL compression, API compression, the, the you know, the, the BX townhouse compressor, which is basically a, a fancy SSL compre style compressor. So I've already done all the punchy compression. At this point on my main bus, I just wanted to keep things a level smooth. I wanted everything smooth. And this is the most transparent and smooth compressor that I I know of. And it is the SPL Iron from Plugin Alliance. So when I play this back, you're not gonna see the needles jumping around. You're gonna see them just kind of go to one spot and just make real slow, small, subtle changes as, as volume changes. So I'll play this back and turn it on. All right, so that's it. And you really probably didn't even hear anything uh, because of how how transparent this is. And it's only doing, you know, maybe max of one dB gain reduction anyway. Very last thing, Ozone Pro. And before the next stream, I got to figure out how to get rid of these damn bots because it is driving me insane. All right, let me, let's see if there's any questions. I was wondering why you mixed this on Pro Tools instead of on Logic. I'm guessing it was the routing options and you know, contact. So the reason I mixed this on Pro Tools instead of Logic was because at the time I was kind of a in a Pro Tools phase. I, I've i used Logic for many years, but it, uh, I had recently decided I'm going to go ahead and start learning Pro Tools. I had gotten a Pro Tools subscription, just went full on Pro Tools um, and figured I would just use this uh, use Pro Tools to mix the CP. That's what I did. Afterwards, I decided I'm going back to the Logic. I just is—it's a great DAW. It has a lot of great things in it. Some things I do miss, 
for one, as simple as this is, uh, or as, as small as this is, one of the things that I really, really, really love about Pro Tools, and this is actually a fairly new feature, they haven't had this very long, is how you can nest buses in these folders like this. So it's, it's kind of a, a routing folder is what it's called. And so how I have all my drums tucked away in this one routing folder, I can expand it. And then within this, I have another routing folder of my kick sum that I can expand and collapse like this. And it's just, I love this. Whereas in Logic, we have one layer of, and I forget what it's called, Geothis, if you're still on, you can probably answer this. Um, but there's, there's like one layer of foldering that you can do to, to like collapse a, a, a bunch of tracks. Um, I forget what it's called. Uh, but you can't put them, those individual folder things like inside of a, one another. It doesn't work that way. You only get one layer deep. So I still end up with tons of buses outside of that that I wish I could just hide away. It's a small thing. Um, yeah, the, summing and folder stacks. Thank you again. I knew you would have the answer. Um, so yeah, that's just one thing I really like about Pro Tools. Uh, but it's a small thing. I can live without it. But yeah. Overall logic is just, just so much more stable for me. Uh, the last thing here is Ozone Pro on my main bus. Let's pull this up. Oh, clicked it too many times. Okay, looking at this, I have Match EQ, I have a little bit equalizer, and multiband dynamics. Let me enable this so we can see it. So the match EQ. So the reference mix that I used for this match EQ was the Blade by Scion. Um, there is just something about the low end in that mix that blows my mind. Um, and so I, and overall it's just a great sound, sounding song So and mix. So I use that as the EQ match here. And you can see, I've only got it blended in at 19%, but I'll pull it all the way up so you can see like the differences in the EQ curve that it found between my mix and the Scion, uh, the, the blade. So you can see as I pull this up, you notice the boost on the on the low end below 60 hertz. It's, it, and you can even see it. The yellow down here is, is the blade. The blue is my mix. And you can see I've kind of tamed off a lot of that low end, whereas this EQ match is saying, if you want to sound like this, you need to boost up more of these lows. Um, and then the same thing with the top end, kind of the upper end bands in the air. So you can see as I bring that up, it brings those up to it, as well as some of the mids and the low mids it brought down and some of the lows. So I only blended this in at 19%. And then the equalizer, just to, bo just to boost up a little bit of those that air band that, like, again, this was telling me, you can see it even here, how this has a lot more top end than my mix. So I just kind of boosted that up a little bit. And then the multiband dynamics is just to tame anything that's happening um, out of control in any of these different bands. Um, so you kind of have the, the kick and bass down here, uh, some of the guitars, and then the, this definitely the snare in this range. Some of, the, some of the snare up here, guitars, vocals, and then just kind of anything in the air bands up here. So let's bypass this. And again, this is on the two bus, the main bus, the whole mix. So that, let's bypass it and turn it back on and see the difference. Not a massive difference, as I would expect with anything that's on my main bus. I don't, I don't want, if, I, if I'm making massive changes, like things that, that have a massive effect on my two bus or the main bus, it's, it's like I'm, I'm doing something wrong. I need to go back into the mix and fix things down in the mix so that I don't have to make drastic changes on the, on, at the top like this. So it's a small thing, but it's, it's just enough to kind of rein things in how I wanted. So that's it. That is, that is the mix. That's everything. And my voice feels like it's going to die now. <laughs> I've, been, I've been talking so much. My voice, I'm going to be talking like this tomorrow. It's going to be great. All right, I got some questions. Let's see. How long did it take you to mix this? How often do you take breaks? Uh, Yuri, uh, 
I think you know what I I now that I think about it, I think someone asked an earlier question. <clears throat> did I track in the same session that I'm mixing in? So to go back to answer that, yes. Um, this all this session started with almost nothing in it, and then I started with the drums, with the bass, <laughs> um, and then uh, I started adding the guitar and tracking the guitar, and then the synths and the effects, the post production stuff. And then after I got the vocals back, then I came back and actually mixed, like full on mixed it. Um, and then your question was, uh, where did it go? How long did it take me to mix this? Uh, gosh, I don't even remember again. It's been like, it was like six months ago, but I would say it probably took me like just again, after doing all the tracking, all the post-production, everything, and I'm just in a mixing phase. I would say it probably took me a couple days. Um, and, and that's like a couple days, like worth of time, not as in I sat for two days straight and, you know, mixed. Um, it was probably two days worth of time over about a week, um, where I'm mixing a couple hours at a time, because I find if I'm really, really trying to focus in on a mix, you're using your ears so hard. You're listening at louder volumes at softer volumes, soloing guitar tracks and all these things. It really burns out your ears real fast. And if you're trying to mix for more than a couple hours at a time, your, your ears just be, get, they get too fatigued and you start hearing things differently. And that's why when you're mixing late at night and, or dialing in guitar tones or whatever it may be late at night, and you're like, oh man, this sounds great. And then you get up and listen to it the next morning with fresh ears. And you're like, oh my God, this sounds terrible. What the hell was I thinking? That's because your ears are fatigued and it is a real thing. So uh, I try not to mix for longer than maybe a couple hours at a time. And I'll probably take, you know, uh, an hour break minimum uh, or even just come back the next day and just, just mix a couple hours a day because again, this isn't just like my full-time job. I do have other things that I do as well. So, um, maybe one day if this is my full-time job and I'm doing this all day, you know, eight hours a day plus I'll, I will, I will be more hardcore about like two hours on maybe 30 minutes off two hours on something like that. But you got to take breaks. It's so important. Uh, let's see other questions. Old school scene with the tranquilizers. Oh yeah. Yeah. The old school scene. <laughs> uh, you really gave me a love and appreciation for death core, dude. I love your album. Thank you again. Bebop Samurai. I love the name. Thank you, man. I, I, I couldn't ask for anything more than for people to, to find joy, find, like, like it, right? Like I, that's all I can ask for. I, I, I wrote the music and mixed it and I was super, super happy with it. And I, I, all I can ask for is that some other people, you know, find, find it, uh, enjoying it or enjoyful as well. See, do you manage to mix several songs at the same time or ever? Oh yeah. Uh, so Christoph, uh, I, I do, you know, like a mixing is something I do regularly and I have multiple clients I'm working with. Um, and while I was mixing this, you know, I'm mixing two other clients as well. Um, one of which recently came out it was a uh, eternal conflict. The song is called in fire. Um, and in fact, that's this month's song on monthly mix. So quick plug for monthly mix. If you're not signed up, uh, anyone who's on the stream or sees this later, look for the link below. It's just August Rose dot studio. Uh, and you can, you can, uh, find it there, but the link will be down below. Um, and so I, I mixed that and that was just recently released and the band was, they okayed it for monthly mix. So y'all can have that and, uh, not have it. I want to take that back. You don't get it. <laughs> you can download the multi-tracks and mix it yourself and submit your mix to the monthly mix mix poll and possibly win prizes from our sponsors. The thing about that mix is it was really fun. Uh, it has like 40 orchestral tra orchestra tracks in it. It's absolutely insane. Um, I can't wait for y'all to hear the full album that I'm working on for them. Uh, it's a concept album, so much orchestra. There's actually one at least one full song on there that's just orchestra and the composition is incredible. I mean, they, they should really be writing like movie soundtracks. It's crazy. Um, let's see what other we got. Songs or reference tracks are definitely a way to go. Yeah, definitely. Um, do you listen all the tracks when you mixing or you got the sounds while listening in solo pin primes music was asking basically 
do I listen to everything altogether or do I dial in sounds and mix with in solo? Um, I would say it's, it's a good mix of both when I'm kind of in the tone chasing phase, uh, which is very early on, uh, I will, I'll definitely listen in solo and that's whether it's bass or drums or guitars or whatever. Um, but when it comes to the point where I'm trying to get things to mesh all together and sound the sound the way that I hear it in my head. And so that they all sound good together. You can hear everything clearly and there isn't all, all sorts of, um, uh, frequency masking happening where you've got multiple things eating up the same space. Uh, then I have to listen to everything in context. And I've said this, I've actually mentioned this many times in previous videos that in context is really, really important and really what matters because you can dial in the sickest guitar tone you've ever heard, but it could sound like total trash when you put it in a mix because you've got your drums, your bass, your vocals, post post-production stuff that's going to all stomp on it and, and take up the same frequency space. So you have to, you have to mix in context. Um, I hope that answers the question. Uh, let's see. I'm currently mixing it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Enjoy that, that eternal conflict song. It's, it's a fun mix. Oh, no worries. I'm being late for studio. Sorry for being late. I didn't see much. Hey, you know what? The video showing up is all that I can ask for. So thank you for showing up. But the this whole long live stream will be, it's being recorded and it'll be on my channel when it's done, when the live stream ends. Do you sometimes have lazy phases where you just mix everything bundled in a bus when the source allows it? Uh, that's a great question. A Bebop Samurai is asking basically, do you ever do anything kind of like quote lazy where, uh, if, if say the source allows it, you could just mix everything in a bus versus like doing a bunch of stuff on the individual tracks, I believe is what he's asking. Um, and the, I do that. I mean, I kind of do that. And I kind of did that in this song, in fact, in the, in the vocals. And in fact, you know what? Um, just kind of looking at the vocals here again, you can see. So look at all the stuff I'm doing on the bus here. I'm doing some EQ, DSing, saturation, EQ again, vocal rider, which is leveling and then compression on the bus and then you look at the individual tracks and there's only one plugin, right? And there's not much happening on the EQ or anything there. So if you look at it, not much EQ, just a little bit of effect compression, that's it. So I kind of, kind of doing that there. And I just realized I could probably go back to just seeing me. Uh, how many total tracks in this session, Vincent Emerald? Uh, in this session, Vincent, do you mean my session, uh, Broken Mirror, or are you talking about the one I was just talking about earlier with uh, about eternal conflict in fire? I'm going to assume you mean my song. Um, I'm not actually sure how many tracks there were. Uh, it was last month on the monthly mix. So if you are signed up for monthly mix, you, you'll have access to it. You can download it and see for yourself. I, I want to say it's probably like, 50 or 60 tracks, something like that. I'm guessing. I don't remember. Yuri, thanks so much for joining. Have a great weekend. Uh, make sure you give the live stream thumbs up if you haven't already. Yes, thank you, Joey. Definitely thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't. It definitely helps out the channel and I, it means the world to me. Oh yeah, Bebop. Yeah, you're not the only one doing this. If it makes sense, do it. All right. We're going to wrap it up there. This has been three hours. My voice is shot. I want to say thank you so much for you all joining in. And uh, with that, I am going to go ahead and, uh, and sign off. Thank you again for showing up. Peace.